Hello, hello. Welcome. Good morning, North America, because I know it's morning everywhere we are. I am Darth Arma, and I'm joined by the awesome Ultra David to bring you some incredible Mortal Kombat 11 action. Uh, big, big shout outs to CGL for making this all happen. I can't wait. I can't wait to see all the incredible matches that we have uh, set up uh, to go on stream for you and just for this entire tournament. David, are you ready to see more Sunray getting punished like we did last time? We actually might, yeah, because we're going to be starting out with uh, Emperor Aztec. We'll see about that, if that does indeed happen. There's already been a lot of great Mortal Kombat uh, from CGL over this past weekend. We're going to be continuing with that today. Uh, and you're right that it's morning. Where I am, it's <laughs> 8.25 in the morning. So I'm here just sipping some coffee still. Yeah, you got you to gotta wake up, get that caffeine. Whew, okay. Yeah. Getting involved. Yeah, no, there's there's going to be a lot of good stuff. Keep in mind that the players today are playing for a prize pot of $1,000. That's going to be top three payout. So if you do finish in that final three, that's quite a bit of money. Oh, yeah, that, that's definitely good money. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's giving back a little bit. You know, I, I love seeing what CGL is doing with the community, uh, you know, seeing the void that, that needs to be filled, uh, you know, with, with awesome content and incredible things to see. So I want to thank all you guys for tuning in right now, watching us. And I hope you guys are just as excited as me and David. I know it's the morning, so we're going to be a little bit more chill. Uh, and it's definitely going to be a great segue later on tonight for uh, Top 8. It's going to mm -hmm. be incredible man you definitely don't want to miss any of this and if you guys are watching you're not following the twitch channel make sure you start following because it's going to be insane so much good content is going to be right here uh whether that's you know fighting games or anything else david you know yeah go go for it <laughs> We will probably be starting with Aztec yeah. versus Kevo. That's what we expect to begin with here. Mm -hmm. But that's just an intro to the players that we have. If you were to go through the bracket, which you can do on Smash GG, just search for Console Combat Online. Uh, you'll see it in there. Check it out because there's a really great list of players. I mean, a lot of the players in North America have shown up for this, which is super cool. Each of the pools stacked, only two uh, is gonna make it through. Um, on the on the winter side, of course, uh, it's going to be extremely extremely stacked. So, the beginning of this, I mean, already there there were some matches that happened in literally round one that we already thought were good enough to highlight. So, starting at round two and beyond, I think every match we're going to see is good. Now, top eight is where you expect to see great matches regardless sometimes when you're in pool play that's not really your experience but i do think that this stream is going to be a little different than that it's pretty jam-packed with strong players yeah no definitely jam jam-packed uh like you said uh we have eight pools filled with incredible players i mean every pool you have at least like three names that you're 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 yeah. seeing you know in top eights top 16s whether they're you know players that like to stream and, and, and just get better and better like you're seeing it all over. Like I'm looking at pool three right now and I see a lot of great players in there. I see Doom, I see Gurr, uh, I see Fierce, uh, Ludi, Red Nose, uh, Full Auto, Combat. This is insane. There's so That's one pool? Yes. That's one pool. That's pool yeah. three. So again, you guys can navigate and see for yourselves because it's really fun to kind of see the pools, you know, uh, see the chaos unfold and, and go right into it. You know, uh, Smash.gg makes it all very simple and you can kind of predict, you know, who's going where. And, uh, you know, voice, voice your opinion. See who you think is going to win. Uh, and right now, it looks like we're, we're trying to get uh, our, our matches started. So just bear with us. Again, a lot of DQs in the beginning, which is yeah. normal. But, you know, I know Gurr is up, ready to go. Uh, looks mm -hmm. like he just checked in. So right now, if you guys look at pool three in that winner's round three, it's most likely going to be Gurr versus Doom. That's going to be an incredible cool. match. That's going to be a good one. Uh, yeah, just to go through some of the rest of the pools, Samich has already played a match, so he is definitely here. That's in pool number one. You got Infinity in there as well. A couple other folks. In pool number two, looking at Scar. In fact, it might be Scar versus Slayer in their second round matches, uh, which is going to be exciting if so. You got Perfect Legend in there as well. Ooh. And again, a couple other folks. Uh, you were just talking about pool number three. I briefly spoke about pool number four, which has the Kevo versus Aztec match that we expect to have. Um, illusions in there as well. Pulses in there. Uh, pool number five. Looking at Biohazard right up at the top. They're playing their match, so he is here. That's nice to see. Uh, you got Zintai in here, who who did well just the other night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sunio's yeah. in there. Hayate's in there. 
And let's, uh, we got pool six as well. Looks like Gross is, uh, checked in. And right now, Gross is playing, uh, Han Rashid. So that should be a good one. Han Rashid, you know. Let's go SoCal. Oh, yeah. Let's go SoCal. Uh, a few other names in here. Too Easy looks like he's all checked in, uh, going up against Yo Boy Rio. Mm. And, uh, yeah, man, this is, this is, this is good. What else? What do we have in pool seven, David? Let's check it out. Uh, why is Gemini's up at the top there? Tigers versus Wound Cowboy is probably a match. Phoenix versus Get Wrecked. And then in Pool 8, Tweety's up at the top. You got Alcatraz in there. K7 versus the Mighty Unjust is a match that's just round two. After Mighty Unjust, by the way, in round one, beat Trap Hustler 3 to, three to 0. That already happened. Uh, Mighty, Mighty's a, uh, <laughs> Mighty. It looks like right now Mighty's doing like the back-to-back -back Sub Zero gauntlet. Trap Hustler mm -hmm. and Seven are both, you know, well-known uh, Sub Zero players. And yeah, you know, Mighty, I, I, I know Mighty usually likes to play a lot, like a lot of variety of characters. Uh, so he's not one shy to to go for. I don't want to say counter pick, but maybe a matchup where, sure. you know, a, a certain character is a little bit more uncomfortable. Uh, so I, I, I would love to see Mighty a little bit down the line if we can get a great match from him. I always I always love seeing like I'm always surprised by which characters he picks. And that's what's so interesting about seeing him. I mean, maybe I'm just saying that because I'm like self projecting how boring I am. Like I'm really bad at picking up multiple characters. Yeah. When I see some I mean, you've been around long enough, David, like, you, you know, you've seen like the players like some players just know how to go from character to character and they're not missing any normals they know all the special yeah. moves like it's it's insane i i can't do that it's so tough it's not easy it's not easy to be honest yeah but some players are practiced enough or talented enough to make that stuff happen so that's a quick rundown of some of the players that we may see moving forward we're going to try to get some of those matches up here for you at least i did mention a couple that i think could be pretty cool yeah yeah, no, a lot of great matches. Uh, David, you're in the king of the hill, but you're not AFK. I just don't want someone oh, yeah, to like you're right. jump in here and then it starts. No, nope, you're right. Wait even longer, but that's okay. We're we're going uh, again. Big shout out to CGL. These players are going to be playing for a thousand dollar prize pool, and uh, top three will be paid out today, or will be paid out in results of today's event. All and, right. Uh, I I can't wait, man. I can't wait. These guys are uh, and I I see you know that. Yeah, obviously we see a lot of DQs. That's normal in a in a yeah, free online game. tournament. Yeah, yeah, free to enter. You don't even have to leave your house. Like you're good. Yeah, for sure. But uh, uh, considering that, I, I still feel like a lot of good players showed up today. A lot of great players showed up today. That's how it looks to me too. All right, so which matches can we get going? Okay, so we are indeed still talking about making it happen for Kevo versus Emperor Aztec. And that was... That would be great. Okay, good to know. <laughs> so it looks like we have uh, Kevo, to, uh, Kevo to Man, aka Kevo Reborn, who's going to be going up against Emperor Aztec. Now, I think usually Aztec requires a someone on the friends list to invite. So Aztec, if you are watching right. the stream, I just sent out that invite to the King of the Hill. Make sure, yeah, you are right there. Hey, what's going on, Aztec? Uh, me and David are real excited to see more of that awesome Kotal play. Uh, <laughs> You know, we're both fans of cats, so we love any special move that turns you into a giant, literally a giant cat. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see. This is this totemic. What can he do? I think this is this is an ultimate test. I mean, right now he's if you guys didn't see last Friday, uh, me and David had the pleasure of uh, commentating the top eight in which Emperor Aztec won uh, the entire tournament that was put on by Rectify Arena. And, you know, he's definitely got to be on a, on a super high right now. Like, like you just feel confident, you know, you're, you're coming off a win, you know, you beat everybody else. Money was on the line and he beat some good players at the end there. Definitely. You know, that definitely, that winner's yeah. finals against doom. That was, uh, that was, that was, that was a, that was a tough one. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He had great footsies, great pressure. His movement was looking good. It was, it was really nice. People even tried to pick different characters that they thought might handle him to, better and, and nothing really seemed to work for them so yeah he played great for yeah, sure definitely played great and it's just it's like um 
What was the uh, all right? So so Doom was playing mostly Sonia for for that yeah. winter finals. Now I know Kevo. It's it's really hard to, to determine what character. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's like you know, one day he's like, you know, after everybody's like downplaying Scorpion or everyone's saying Scorpion's bad, then you know, Kevo uses a Scorpion like out of nowhere or Liu Kang or Jackie. I, it's it's really tough to say what character Kevo. What Kevo character is really good? What character has a good matchup in this matchup? I mean, that's that's it. You know, I respect that. I'm not casting any aspersions on that. I think that's pretty legit. But that is what he does. And so in this matchup, I think I'd be surprised to see him go with the character that would depend on projectiles mm -hmm. for their game plan. Because, of course, the cat, as you know, all cats are projectile and vulnerable. Yeah, and like water. Cats in, the, in this game, they can just get right through. Exactly right. Uh, so I'd be surprised to see that. But I don't know. Like you said, he's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, maybe Jackie, you know, she doesn't really have a projectile, so that's not yep. something that's really going to, you know, come into play. But uh, if I remember right, Aztec did an okay job of dealing with uh, upgraded Jackie in, I want to say it was in the, in, in that top eight, or it might've been a little bit before, um, you know, she doesn't have a projectile that the cat can kind of, you know, go through, but Maybe he'll finally use a, a variation that's not totemic, um, you know, which is, again, out of, I, I think out of those three variations, that's the one I see the least. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely right. But I do think that it's really good. And I think that, well, I'd like to see more of it. Let me put it that way, because I think it's really strong. Having that cat there, especially with the safe uh, amplified version, it just, it lets you cover some of the holes that he has. Uh we're live. We're good. We're up. We're ready. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, little little hiccup there, but you know, like I said, we want to see more. <laughs> okay, we had a little execution error there on Discord. Oh man, you can't. You, you should. You should have just blamed it on the weather. Like, yeah. uh, is that is that a is that a Street Fighter Five Ken portrait, or is that the Street Fighter 4 one on your mug? Oh, on my mug. Uh, it's Street Fighter 4. Yeah, this is probably a decade ago old at this, oh at this point. That's it's an old uh, mug. Some great memories. Some great memories. Street Fighter 4. I will always... I will always... Ah, okay. like, see... You got Kevo on his way. Okay, good. Kevo, Kevo the man on his way. I will always see Street Fighter 4 as like that game that revitalized like the fighting game community like it got a big like, part of it yeah i i mean that's that's how i always saw it because like that sparked you know all these other you know developers and companies to like you know hey maybe we should make this you know competitor focused again and you know right. we've, we've gotten great games from it i mean i i don't know if that's like a hundred percent fact but i feel like if it wasn't for street fighter 4 we might have not gotten MK9 to go yeah, back. Yeah, it's hard to say, right? I've never actually asked any of the devs about that, but it's hard to say because that did come out a couple years later, right? SF408, yeah. MK9 11, yeah. um, 2011. So it was a few years. But regardless, right? I mean, it's it, it did have a big impact. Mm. Here we go. We got Emperor Aztec in the building, and it is going to be Lou for Kevo Demand. Okay. okay. So this is interesting because Liu Kang, you know, although he's got uh, some great up close game, not anything specific in the mix up department, but one of the most solid mids that leads into great crushing blows, great damage all around. Um, however, he does have an incredible fireball that you cannot duck. You cannot neutral duck the low fireball. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a big, big part of Liu Kang's game. And Aztec's going to have a button, uh, a formation to go right through it. Let's see what he does. Woo! Yeah, we've seen him do that. actually. Yeah, well, it's, okay, this is the game plan right here. Oh, he's too super. Getting the hit, not exactly a punish there. There it is. So I'm a little surprised to see the low fireball. Exactly. That's the cat. I mean, maybe he doesn't know what this variation does. Oh, maybe. he's a genius. Come on. <laughs> he just found out. Wow, that cat is like a real cat, and it goes like the projectile. That's safe. Yeah. Yeah, he can just blow up the distance super quickly. Again, yeah, you're looking for the gaps there. Nope, the cat's gonna come in. Exactly, exactly. It's kind of like a mix-up. Yeah, oh, don't do it though. Oh my God, it actually worked. It actually worked. <laughs> Let me tell you why he did this sunray right here. It's because we ragged on him all night during the top eight that he won. Every time he did it, he lost a round. And here, I think he's trying to tell us, "Look, man, I'm gonna do it this time. It's gonna work." It's gonna work. I mean, in that in that exact situation, Kevo could have done Fatal Blow to bypass the sun. Yeah. But you know, it was going to be really hard to make that seventy percent comeback. All right, I think we're on four pops already. 
We love the hops. We love that the, the hop kick is just so punishable, but it's so tricky. A lot of people don't see it coming. And here he is just kind of healing up in the sun yeah. afterwards. Okay, it looks Super like a funky stagger choice. Ooh, we probably tried to get in there with the kick. Nope. Yeah. And extra damage and life back. Look at that. 213 and some life back for himself. It's not bad. Not bad at all, man. Especially if you already got an extra 100%, uh, 100 points. That's 10% of your health. Safe, yeah. I can't believe it. He's, uh, I don't know. Oh, hold on a second. Down to Crushing Blow. Gonna get some good damage. Kevin, uh, Kevin Man getting some incredible damage, incredible corner carry, and Aztec refusing to break away. Just to kind of keep him on his toes. All right, but this is scary. One hit, oh, yeah. the fatal blow, he's dead. He got touched! What happened? Was he trying to counter poke too fast? I, I think he was trying oh. to counter poke. I don't think he's dead, though. I don't think he's dead. He's got an extra no. 100, remember. That's it's, true, he does, he does, he does. If it was any other- Don't put the stun right up, please. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we're seeing a switch. We're seeing, this is that, this is that. You think so? Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of relying on projectiles, and that's what's so special about this variation here. You can shut those all down. Yes, you give up your, your mid command grab, which you can tick throw. It's really, really great. But you know what? That The cat is, is a great tool to kind of play that little mind game uh, that usually only works at high level is when you do those strings with the flawless block gap, just like David pointed out uh, earlier in this game. Uh, you, you do the cat to throw off the timing and then they let go of block looking to flawless block the overhead and instead they're getting hit by the cat and then there's like free damage for you. What do we got? Will he in fact do it? Yeah, no. not even variation switch? Okay. Nothing, man, nothing. I mean, yeah, maybe the other variation could be a good way. Uh, you know, you, you lose the low fire fireball, but you get, you know, that teleport that's very, very tough to punish. Uh, you can obviously punish it, punish all the options with neutral jumps. But you know that's where the mind game comes in. You can see the high fireball stopping you from neutral jumping. Um, but but Kevo, I think Kevo understands what he might have done wrong, and maybe he needs to just get a little bit more aggressive here in this matchup. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for as well. He thought Aztec was going to do the cat jump, but it was a cat pounce again. And he's oh, that actually punished. So I think next time Kevo's probably going to amplify. Oh, oh, already, already in that quarter. Flawless block, okay. At any time, Kotal could just get in there, man. The guy's range, especially with that cat. Okay, goes for the little now. Oh. He would need it. Ah, I love it. What a read by Kevo. Incredible read by Kevo Duban. Back throw for the throw mix. Failed the escape. And escape fail. Uh oh. That's gonna that's gonna fill that crushing blow requirement. Is gonna use it. Not gonna, he already did. Oh wow, okay. 31%. 31%. Already spent. That's right, that's right. He, <laughs> nope, out of there though. He wants the momentum. He, it's for him, you know, this is a first to this is a first to three. So, you know, you gotta get that momentum on your side as soon as you can, especially coming after uh, a loss in the set. Mm-hmm. I'm backing off. At this point that makes sense. All he's gotta do is chip in a little bit more here. Good awareness there by uh Emperor Aztec, knowing that he was, you know, in, in a good range to 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 kind of throw up that mm. side. But I think next time oh, oh. he had it, but not the rest. What happened? There's only 18 seconds left on the clock, David. That's true. Well, that's that's time if you well, okay. If you had found the fatal blow, obviously it would have been plenty of time, but there's the little fireball. So uh, you know, that's the little fireball is not just about zoning, right? You also have the extra option of it uh, point blank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like, again, a little bit of a mix-up, um, yeah. you know, does hit low. So, you know, so sometimes when people are just looking to, to challenge uh, or poke back. Like a neutral duck or something, you know, you blow them up. Exactly. Yeah, in Good there. Luck. No flawless block here from Kevin to man. Yeah, he's worried about that cat. Okay. Crushing blow. Breakaway, 400, just like that. Oh, actually too early on the stream. Yeah, it was either too early or Kevo opted to go for a really long delay there, which yeah, not, right, not right. too conventional, but you know, some players like to, to, to dip into that after a while. Beautiful. His throws are really working now. He's getting a great read on the timings that Aztec likes to use to counter mm -hmm. Good challenger by Aztec. I believe that was a jail from uh, his... Oh, no, no nothing here from uh, Kevo Demand. No hit. With, oh, what? He, he was looking for the rest of that string. He was, he was, yeah. yeah. Here we go yet again. It's a grab, and one hit confirm if it's the right one's going to be enough. Keep in mind, last time he did just cancel in the fatal blow, and it worked. <laughs> I'm so scared. Oh, he tried, he tried, he tried. 
Uh, now I think he got the armor. I just don't think he had the health to withstand. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right too. Chuck the projectiles. Those are highs, so you know, not too dangerous. Smart move there by uh, Emperor Aztec. Like perfect timing. But I think you know you, you can't get too used to doing that against Liu Kang. The flying yeah. kick be coming your way. Good throw escape. <gasps> the whiff actually. Okay, unfortunate there for Aztec into the corner. Now it's loaded up. I believe that was like the first up three we saw from Aztec yeah. full set. Definitely. Their, their escape. Man, he's guessed wrong on like every single throw. Yeah, Kevo keeps throwing him towards the middle. So, you know, I think Aztec puts a lot of, uh, you know, emphasis on which way are you throwing me? Not really like, I'm, am I gonna guess? Trying it again. Uh oh. Yeah. Let's save. Oh, it was not yet loaded. I thought it was. This is definitely loaded now. Here we go, though. <laughs> One throw. That... Looking for the breakaway didn't come. How smart was that? Okay, both players have fatal blow, but I think Luke Kang's is a little bit scarier. Oh, yes, and the confirm. As soon as I say that, he finds a way. He, find, he hits that down three, jails him with the stand one, and just like that, it looks like Kevo was either trying to neutral duck, trying to jump, trying to do anything but block after that that low poke. And Emperor Aztec was looking incredible. Not so much. I, I don't think there was as much emphasis on the cat ability here, the cat yeah. special move. Um, you know, it was more of just Kevo playing really up front, really close to him, and, you know, still Emperor Aztec getting the best of him uh, in that game. So I don't know if Kevo's going to switch. If he didn't switch after that first game, I don't think he's going to switch after this one. Well, keep in mind the reason that it was such a sort of up-close game, that there was so little projectile zoning out yeah. of Kevo, was the implied threat of that cat, right? Mm -hmm. That was... It was involved in the sense that he didn't have to bring it out. Aztec didn't have to do it because the implied threat of that cat at any moment he could crawl right through the projectiles was there. Kevo knew it. So exactly. Kevo back to the same character. Did he switch a variation? I didn't see. No, I think he's still staying with the same one. We should see in the loadout. Yep, low, yep, low fireball. And, you know, like I said, like I, he definitely saw progress. And he knows that Emperor Aztec is a player that mainly just plays this variation. So if Kevo can get to a place where he feels comfortable and he's getting there, he's getting progress, then maybe he can reverse 3-0. Wow. That was the first unblockable that we've seen. And right now, Emperor Aztec is just throwing a monkey wrench into this game plan of Kevin Man. And Kevin Man is stuck on this match. He cannot switch away from this character until he loses. They both have their escape fields loaded. That is kind of scary. Yeah, it's definitely scary. <laughs> Harassing into the corner. Spend them. Yep, both. Yeah, that's uh, trying to load up the KB as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah what an escape, man. Wow. That actually punished. That's gonna be scary. That's gonna shut off the projectiles for uh, Emperor Aztec. Mm hmm. Underneath, saw it in time. Oh my god. David, how many times do we have to tell no. him? How many times do we have to tell him? Was it even intentional? What else could he have done? I what think that's supposed to have been. I just I want to believe that it wasn't on purpose, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It looked pretty on purpose. Maybe he was just trying it to get. It did look pretty on purpose. Maybe look, look, David. He's trying to get his crushing blow out of the way. He said, oh, "I'm in the corner. I'm going to put myself in a wonderful state, uh, oh. so I can give up this round, and you don't get that really, really good crushing blow anymore." Ooh. That makes total sense to me. That was definitely flying kick intended. Uh huh. Uh huh. It was. There he is now. This is where Kevo wants to be harassing. Chip damage is in there. Safe strings, fast stuff. Whoa! Oh no! Oh my god, quit it, he said. Oh, hold on a second. Hold oh, on. Big damage, though. This is a 400. Yes. So very doable. This is the KB, right? Yes. One more is going to do it. Are you about to kill him in three hits? Oh my god. Oh, he actually no, He's not dead? You come on. Oh, I almost my heart almost <laughs> dropped, Arma. Dude, I saw your hand. I can't believe he did it. Well, I can't believe he did it. If Kevo did reversal, like fatal yeah. blood, especially considering how fast Luke Kangs is, it would have mm. aided the sun right away, and that would have been his game. He gets his own crushing blow with the back throw here, breaking the ribs. Short hops, he loves it, man. Even after he just got punished for doing it, he's still doing it because, yeah, what other overhead are you going to be looking out for? 
scary stuff, man. At that range, that, that flying kick can come your way. I'm actually surprised that Kevo didn't amplify that high shot. It's been punishing the cat every time it gets to the other side. Yeah, that's true. Throwing up the sun. Okay, getting a little health back. A little bit of health back here. Kevo very patient in this range right here. He knows about forward two. He knows about the cat. Okay, and that's why dash of grab works. Uh, remember when these characters used to get KBs on both sides? <laughs> I wish that still existed in a game. A block. He might be getting wise to this stuff. We've already seen it twice. Ah, bringing out the extra tricks. And keep in mind, Aztec only needs to win this round and he will move on. Yes. So he's yes. bringing out the tricks for sure and it did not work out. Yeah. It's a common tactic at match point. You bring out all your little shenanigans just to try. Right, you haven't used them before. The opponent's not expecting them. Exactly. Shenanigans time, but Kevo's too smart for that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, he was kind of, um, you know, uh, we saw the unblockable for the first time. Like, imagine playing a Kotal in a set. You know, three games go by and you don't see the unblockable. It, you know, it surprises you. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, people aren't super familiar with all the variations. Uh, as to you know what tools they still have, but I believe Koto has that unblockable in all three of his variations, so you kind of have to watch out for it. Always, always watch out for it. Uh, and Aztec sticking with the same variation, um, and I think Kevo's got a good plan. I think he's got a good plan here. Uh, I've seen lesser players like you know panic in situations like that. Uh, you know when it goes down to the wire, you barely drop a game. And you're 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 so willing to go to a different character, and and Kevo's showing you know mental fortitude here, just just being really strong and saying I can do this, I can I can best him with this character. I'm adapting, I'm figuring it out. Okay, <laughs> getting the stuff off the screen. That's right. You don't want it to mess up your inputs later, especially if you've got like a one two or a two one string. Always mess it yeah. out. Been there. <laughs> or you try to amplify something as a reversal and you just get amplified. I like this a lot because Kevo has been walking into that spot and blocking or just walking backwards pretty common looking just stand block. <laughs> but the low comes in and Kevo just didn't expect it. It's really interesting, right? It's it's almost like Kevo is waiting for Aztec to come to him. Uh -huh. Yeah, like he's, he's and then begin his own pressure. Yeah, he's like expecting the forward two. Yeah, the forward two or the cat or whatever. That might have been plus. Oh boy. Escape failed as well. Not just near the end of the round, but loading up the KB. Yeah, the round's over. And now Kevo starts this second one in a pretty good spot. I want to say Kevo threw him like three or four times there. And that's showing that, you know, he's in, in Aztec's head. He knows when Aztec's going to be blocking. A little back throw here, but no escape from Kevo to man. Okay. Hey, got him. Is he gonna do it right back to him? Throw him two or three more times? Oh, mm. oh he's in his head! He said, you're not in my head, I'm in here! Maybe. Uh, right block. Crushing blow? No. But it is still loaded, ready to go. Definitely there, yeah. Are those, are those our first bicycle kicks, David? First two? I think so. Again, Kevo just walks up into that range, waits. Okay, now it's his turn, right? And as a result, he gets a little bit of chip damage, he gets a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Aztec needs to go for some more staggers here. No, never mind. Those those are our second and third bicycle kicks there. Mm -hmm. oh. oh my god. It's the classic Liu Kang round two or three, right? <laughs> KB after KB. <laughs> KBs after KBs. Oh. Yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Game to Kevo, who definitely has sort of developed a strategy on the fly in this match. I think maybe coming into this, this wasn't his strategy necessarily, but he's really noticed that it's been effective against the way Aztec's playing. Aztec will get into these ranges where Kotal does have big buttons. He's got options that get him up close safely, but not that get him up close with plus frames, right? So Kevo can wait to block those things and then begin his own offense as Liu Kang with his very fast options. Fast mid, fast high, right? He's got great stuff. And if he can't actively move forward, okay, come to me, Kotal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I feel like it's a, it's a very passive um, way to deal with Kotal's buttons there. And I think it's because the cat, the, the timing between the cat and the forward two are very different. 
Whereas, yeah. like, I've seen other players deal with Kotal by getting into that range, saying, like, all right, I know forward two is coming, and they flawless block it, up to it, get their own combo. Obviously, it depends on what character you're playing. You know, some characters can get really good situations or really good damage from the up two, but Kevo is just being very patient. He's waiting. He's like, I'm not going to take any risks. And right now, we're finding ourselves in a game five scenario here. So there's a range here where you can be pretty safe as Lou and throwing fireballs. Yeah, it's just outside of regular cat range. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I just feel like he needs to delete Sunray. No! Oh my god. That, that time, hold on. He, he's, he already is getting the health back, David. It's already coming. Yes. <laughs> oh. Again, safe, but not plus, and so Kevo instantly takes control. Ah! Double dipping? Is that a double dip, David? Back to back throws? That's a that's a big no no sometimes. Mm, he is staggering more there. He certainly recognized the same situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see that. No cat, but you know what? It looks like Kevo doesn't even want to think about flawless blocking that gap. Oh. Okay. Oh, that was a flawless block attempt there. For sure. And Kevo, super safe stuff. Extremely safe play. That said, one or two hits at most here from death. Yeah, next hit could kill. For sure, Emperor Aztecs is... Uh, is... Again? Three. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. He got him! It's not enough, though! Okay! I can't believe it. How many throws was that? Four throws in that single round? Now, I understand playing... Slowly and cautiously, and waiting for the opponent to come to you. But maybe a little bit more than that. That maybe was just do a little bit more than that. It was just like a snowball of like bad decisions, and like Kevo just kept saying, like, "All right, I'm just gonna keep blocking. I'm gonna keep blocking. I can take the throw. I can take the throw. I can take the throw." Until finally, he couldn't. He couldn't he take couldn't. the throw. And just died from it. Man, Emperor Aztec. I mean, uh, that that I I thought he was done. He was in the corner. Yeah. Like any other player would have mentally checked out. It looked like real bad news. Got him! Yes, certainly. But that is two bars spent just like that. The first time it's hit in like three games and he just didn't think to cancel it. I mean, you have to, you can't react to that hitting. No, no, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta trust that, you know, when you're throwing these buttons, you gotta, it's gonna hit, it's gonna hit. Oh my God, it, never mind. It was, Even Kotal's feet didn't connect. The range on that up three is super good. Okay, back throw, but uh, Kevin Demand's definitely looking for failed escape. Uh, this time, Emperor Ask not giving it to him. <gasps> Counter hit, yes, crushing blow, but only gonna get a flying kick because we're not in the corner. Still really good damage, nearly 35%, and Kodal's a big boy. He got a lot of damage to do here. He's got an extra 10% than any other character. He's gonna heal himself. Uh, yeah, there he is. And the shenanigans again. Keep in mind, match point. Yes, here he comes. Kevo has fatal. Eight seconds, okay. seven seconds. Clock through the time as well. Yeah, if Aztec just backs off and blocks, and he knows it, and that's gonna be that. Emperor Aztec over Kevo Demand. Insane. What a great set, man. We saw as adaptation after adaptation, both players understanding, you know, what you have to do. And we saw a lot of throwing because they were playing against characters where it's like you're too scared to let go of block. Like Kodal, he's got that fatal blow. That's like his primary access to good damage in this variation um and, and that's really what it came down to in those last few games it's like no more projectiles no more cat or at least minimal projectile minimal cats yeah. and it just came down to blocking normals it was a very like strike throw game like just perfect there and wow oh man dude that comeback in that first round, game number five, how did he do it? He was dead to rights. He had like 1% in the corner. Aztec rolled out of there. And in my head, I, I didn't say it, but in my head, I'm like, all right, well, at least he got out of the corner. He's thinking about the long game. Like he's thinking about yeah. the next round, but he wasn't. He no. found his way through back to back, back to back, back to back throws. And Kevo just kept taking the throw, taking the throw. I don't think we ever even saw a failed escape there. So that was, that was how, that was how much Kevo committed to blocking in that point, where he was just like, I'm just going to block. I'm just going to block. I'm just going to block. He's not going to sit here and throw me eight times. <laughs> it was a really good recognition by Aztec of the strategy that we were talking about that Kevo seemed to be yeah. using, of Kevo just sort of waiting, right? Have Aztec come to you. Now, as Lou, it's your turn to get things going. It's just very passive style, like you said. 
and Aztec recognized that. He saw the passivity and he went in and he, rather than doing the sort of strings he was doing before, he started to get weird staggers, forward two by itself into down one or down three, like stuff like that, began to work. And then the throw game, if the opponent's being too passive, it's time to grab. And that's exactly what happened. Shout outs to Aztec for seeing that strategy from his opponent, getting the counter to it. Exactly, exactly. And uh, that's where it is. And, and guys, keep in mind, like every single throw you see, there's a huge risk to doing it. And we saw it there, you know, the down two crushing blow or just neutral ducking it, making it whiff and getting a full combo punish. There is always a, a risk to throwing. And that just shows you like how much they, they, they knew about each other. When you see a successful throw, that means that means you're in there. David, what do we have coming up next? Up next. Let's go over to pool number two, where one of the matches that I called out, as I hope we would see, we are indeed going to see this is going to be Scar versus Slayer. Round two for both of them. In fact, it looks like it's their first match of the day, having just encountered a DQ so far. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Slayer and Scar. These guys are hungry. Which pool was that again, David? Pool number two. Pool number two. Yeah, I mean, Slayer's been on you know a big grind lately. Slayer ready to go here. And uh, Scar, always a, a, a NRS player that you don't want to count out, whether it's Mortal Kombat, Injustice 2, he's always in it to win it. And uh, seeing a lot of Kung Lao from Scar lately. So I don't know if we're going to see a different character. I know he's been kind of, you know, messing with other characters. I think I saw a video of him the other day playing, um, messing around with Ten Hut, Sonya. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see it quite like we did uh in our last broadcast but i, I think scar is 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 willing to, to tap into different characters especially in a first to three setting you know you got a new character you're feeling good about them maybe the other player isn't expecting it but for the most part i think we're going to see kung lao from scar all right well slayer's already in here ready he's geared and up. you know who slayer's going to be playing it's going to be a bit upgraded jackie oh yeah yeah upgraded jackie he also plays a little bit of gearus for I guess he's non-existent bad matchups for Jackie, but uh, he plays a little bit of Gears and he also plays a little bit of Shang. But for the most part, like I, I'm seeing success out of Slayer when he's using yeah. Jackie. Like he loves, he loves, loves playing Jackie. Um, you know, which is really it, that character is just nothing but adrenaline. Like go, 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 and it, it's crazy. And I think that fits Slayer's play style. Like you know, all jokes aside about how good Jackie is, like even if she wasn't this crazy good character that character fits slayer's play style like i've been i've known slayer since injustice one Agreed. he's oh like he loves those characters that go in go in go in not to say like he's some crazy player who doesn't know how to go on defense but it's just like he would rather be on offense than defense he's very very aggressive everybody's got an archetype that they like and yeah i think that it makes sense for him for sure and it's fun to watch him play he is he's partying as jackie the whole time you can tell like some people who are playing jackie or whatever character it is it doesn't feel like there are sort of hearts in it sometimes even if it's the right matchup but for slayer like already in the chat he's posting his own emotes of upgraded jackie's <laughs> special moves like he is invested in the character and you can see he really enjoys it i think that's awesome oh yeah yeah no he does he does he has a lot of fun playing the character and, and just a lot of fun playing you know the game and i love seeing I, I love seeing slayer really committing to the community again it's it's really awesome to see yeah. it's been doing a lot of great things so so big shout outs to slayer i see you there you're awesome man i love what you're doing with your stream uh an incredible money match and ha uh, money match happened uh on his stream last night uh between full auto and can't stop the train so if you guys want awesome awesome content definitely uh hit up slayer yeah Good old, good old Slayer. And uh, I did send over the invite to Scar. So Scar, if you are watching the broadcast, uh, I'm trying to send you the invite, buddy. So hopefully you did get it. Yes, he's in there. He's in there, David. We're ready to yeah, go. Yeah, we, we know. We, we've let him know that the bracket had an error with Aztec. They'll that sorted out, I'm sure. Cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, we all saw what happened. You know, it, it, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was very close to being like a 3-0 uh set in in favor of aztec but kevin a man brought it back and it's just really heartbreaking when you're like so close to making that comeback uh especially against you know someone who just won a tournament like it's, it's so good so good all right scar and slayer scar picking kung lao like we were kind of expecting and slayer uh going with the the spawn uh <laughs> spawn and, jackie yeah, Spawn Jackie. I love when she hits the the crushing blow with the the back of her heel, and it's like the big heel, and just like pops them up. 
All right, all right. Slayer, what do you got for us? Scar, how are you going to stop this upgraded Jackie? He's got a good... Uh, it, both these characters have great air-to-air -air presence. Yeah, great damage output for both. Ooh, already in. Okay, instantly used. Looking for a false block, probably. Wake up this time. And now, just like that, Scar's got a chance. What are you going to do? Here he comes. Keeping it very simple. Yo! Damn, not punished, just didn't expect. Lovely anti-air here from Slayer. Already looking really strong, setting it up. Again, maintaining presence. Yeah, the, the, oh. oh, duck, but not enough! And only down one on the whiff there. That was a good oh, answer. You guys. Yeah, come on, guys. Pick it up, pick it up. Good anti-air, just didn't execute the, the, the combo right afterwards. Oh, beautiful stuff here. Hold on, he's one fatal blow away from making this happen. It's very doable right here, yeah. I almost feel like, <gasps> no, the lack of confirmed. I mean, it, hard to do, hard to do. It is, but I think that was more of like a lack of confidence. Like, you know, he, he's like, there's no way Slayer's getting hit by the second Amplified at, and then he did and he wasn't ready for it. That could have easily been Scar's round. Beautiful, flawless block up two from Slayer. Mm, want to get corner in that combo when there are no dice. Here it comes. Lovely air to air right there. Here it comes. Scar with the big whip, but only down one. It was only the chance to start pressure instead of the big damage. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Not missing the confirms those last couple times. The hat hit. Scar waking up a little bit. Again, second round matchup. In fact, actually third round matchup, but both of these players haven't had to play yet. They just have been uh, running into DQ so far. So we're yeah. in their very first game of the day. I'm sure they warmed up with Combat League. I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't love oh, jumping on Combat League to start off a great, great day? <laughs> just to set the tone right, right? <laughs> You gotta, you gotta learn how to deal with a good confirm here from Scar. Going for the side switch, not easy to do. And Scar possibly looking for an up two on wake up, but I'm not really sure. Maybe he did a little too early. There's no more bar here. Again, air to air. How many times have we already seen that in this game? It, it's Trying a, it yet again. It's a big commitment. Yeah, I think he's dead now. No, yeah, no I don't think he's dead. No it ahead. was just a bunch of great reads by Scar. I love the moments that he chose to go up into the sky. You can see Slayer tried to use Leap to get in. That's what you do. He just tried to jump away sometimes. And I want to say three or four times, Scar met him in the sky with Jump Punch and got a nice combo afterward. Yeah, and then those are 100% are reads. Like you, oh, yeah. You don't have time to you know try to react, like to see if she left the air. You just kind of have to uh, assume that there. So I, I think Slayer needs to show a little bit more patience. Uh, you know, because of any of those reads there from Scar where he's trying to, you know, go jump punch. If you whiff that in the air and you don't have a special move that you can kind of mess with your own air trajectory, you're coming down, you're landing on the ground, and you're going to be punishable. So I think Slayer needs to just kind of wait, what? Really? Hold on. No, he's joking. He's trolling. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he got you so bad. Yeah, he got I got got. I got got. Yeah. I got got. Uh, all right, all right. But Slayer, you know, he's been in both these players have been competing for quite some time since the MK9 days. And, you know, so they, they understand what it is to 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 be in this in this setting. And I think Slayer trolling with that Scorpion pick just kind of shows like, all right, you know, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not emo. I'm not depressed that I lost. Like, I'm having fun. This is all in good fun. And, and I can do this. And he, he can absolutely do this. Might have intended a more grounded approach, or at least to make things Scar, uh, Scar think about that, but Scar's yeah. still going right up into the sky. Full-on empty jump into pressure. Talk about confidence right there. And then the duck looking for a grab. That's not what came. Oh, all the reads are right. Player looking for some mids. Maybe he was looking for Scar to go for a neutral duck. But Scar taking to the sky a lot in this set right now. I mean, I guess that's what's that, 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 that saying. If you can't beat him, join him. Going up to the sky with Jackie and just kind of stopping her at every approach. Yeah, the original bird character. Laos back in the building. <laughs> Loud bird. I feel like we've seen this kind of pressure so rarely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we have. And that's a good punish. Good recognition there from Slayer. Letting go of block, I assume. Or maybe Scar just whiffed it there. there. It there it is. I never realized how much that up three recovered on whiff. And it definitely has a lot of recovery there. And with the low. Mixing everything up now is Slayer. The lows in there, the grabs in there. These are all things that we didn't really see before. <laughs> what? 
Do what? what? Nah, no way, no way, no way, no way. He just, he like stopped for a second and then just said, spin. Spin to win, baby. Spin to win. Unfortunately, I uh, had, had too much ground to cover, even with Jackie's, you know, 5% less health. Slayer really trying to take control of these situations, but he's in the corner now. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to poke out a frame there. After getting hit with down three, Slayer's just kind of you know, trying to do something else. Oh. Mm, nice, the little switch. Definitely a good string to hit when you're back. And now the he's got the reads of the air to airs. Okay, Slayer's coming back to life. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it all unravel here. Okay, regular throw here, 14%, not bad. Is he gonna do it again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Got him. Yeah, I, I think Slayer was 100% looking for a neutral duck there. And, you know, it was just so, it, it was it was a it was a perfect storm because Slayer didn't have access to break away. And Slayer knowing that Scar didn't, knowing that Scar knew Slayer didn't have access to break away, I guess he just kept thinking like, all right, he's going to try to combo me because I can't break away in this scenario. And Scar just kind of played one step ahead of that and said, I'm going to throw him, throw him until I feel like he's really nervous about the throw. And then that last attempt there, um, you know, a lot of people, it's kind of like this unwritten rule to not, uh, to not go for throws for like the final hit because you're risking so much. You're risking a down two crushing blow. Uh, you're risking, you know, down two crushing blow into fatal blow. And it, it could be a lot of damage that you're losing just because you want one throw there at the end. But Slayer was so flustered by back-to-back -back throws. He was just like so sure Scar was going to dip in for the third time potentially the game in which Slayer gets sent to losers. I do feel like he began to do a little more strongly. Whoa, boy, neutral hat, huh? Just hanging out there in footsies, footsies hat. Yeah, footsies hat. And Slayer taking uh, Scar for a ride here, applying a lot of pressure, wanting to hold on to the one bar, uh, you know, for, for additional offense there after the combo. And I think it was the right move, you know, if he did get the, the hit, but he didn't. Forward throw from Scar. Now we saw this again last round. This is uh, scary. We don't want to be here. Good oh, and nice. nice. Mm -hmm. And all oh, the bars gone. Okay. This is the time to party. No, instead it was a whiff. Scar gets in there. A lot of short hopping we're seeing here. Lovely anti air. Yeah, very nicely done. Some characters have trouble dealing with that. Loud looks like he's got a nice stand one in that situation. Beautiful conversion. Absolutely beautiful. Down two doesn't combo unless you hit it high enough. Slayer recognizing that, hitting the down poke and going right into the fatal blow, but it's not enough. I thought it was gonna be enough. I didn't think it was gonna stay. That only worked because of the faint in the sky. If instead Slayer had just done the full on leap, that wouldn't have connected. That would have gone underneath the leap, but Scar actually called out that Slayer would do leap into faint in the sky. What a genius. He's on match point. Oh, man. Oh, much deserved match point here. Slayer's going to have to kick it up a notch if he wants to take this over Scar. This is do or die for you, buddy. You don't have fatal blow, but you got some good bar here. Oh, what an anti-air from Scar. Hold uh -huh. on. Uh-huh. Punish, though. Big boot. Look at that big boot. I love it. Down two. He knew he was going to break away. Big jump in, and uh, looks like Scar was trying to challenge after that jump in, but Slayer, you know, knowing he hit it deep, back throw, Slayer in a bad spot. He doesn't do well in corners like this with no interactable to get out, and Scar is jumping all over the place. Air to air, good conversion, gonna do some good damage. Uh, not a hard knockdown because they're all hard knockdowns. Dash point yeah. here, Slayer. Again, again, again. There was no more meter to keep that going anyway. Scar knew that that was gonna be a guaranteed anti air. Super smart. And now Slayer looks like he may be waiting for that bar to come back to get the range on it. He does. He's in there though. Hold on. He doesn't have to blow though. <gasps> Yo, he got the round. No okay, pain, no Slayer. Game. Staying alive, just barely. Bloodied, you can see, but alive. <laughs> Definitely on last limbs here. Slayer still in this, still in it to win it. Down two, not close enough to convert. Again, very, very specific stuff with these down twos if you want a combo afterwards. So you're getting some good damage. Just wake up. Is he is he in here to play now? All of a sudden you waited until the last round? No, here comes Scar. Back throw from Scar. Not incredible, Oki, but you know, able to jash in, get that down three, but Slayer all over it, able to find his own hit. Super alive! Oh, he's taking big risks. 
He didn't have the bar though. Chip is all he needs. Oh, what? From Star? The awareness. His defense is too good right now. He needs one more hit. Oh god. Two more hits. What? Look at that hit box. No, Scar, don't do it to him. Don't do it to him, Scar. Even lost one of his his uh his defensive bars, thanks to that last breath mechanic, and he was able to somehow clutch it out. And I don't think that was a specific shot at Slayer. I think it was just Scar not being able to contain himself because of that was an incredible play. That was awesome. <laughs> he did not lose faith at all. What a comeback. What a comeback in those games. Look, man, many characters jump back in a situation like that. They can't hit you again, but if only... Kung Lao had had a dive kick for the last 30 years. <laughs> it, was, it was very close. It was very, very close. I mean, you saw the hitbox. You saw that dive kick, that, that leg coming out from Kung Lao. And like I said, before going into this, both these characters have incredible, like, air mobility and, and just air, uh, you know, dominance, air awareness. Yeah. So kind of like seeing... Big damage out of air to air situations, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and they're always going to be there. It's very tough to contest, but you saw a lot of matchup specific things from Scar. Uh, you know, the stand jabs, the the down pokes. Whenever you know Jackie had a certain amount of meter, knowing you know which tools or which um you know which options are available or aren't available, thus narrowing down what you have to do when Jackie you know just jumps in on you. And Scar did an incredible job of handling Jackie in that set. So I do think it was cool to see Slayer begin to figure things out a little bit more. You go back and look at the first game or two, he got basically blown up. But by the end there, he was taking more rounds. He was moving a little bit better. His pressure was looking stronger. He almost won that last game, right? It was very close. Oh, but yeah. it's only a first three. That's the rule. He knew it. He didn't get the adaptation quite in time. GG to him. He goes down to loser's side. That's a pretty tough first match. Again, that was not technically his first match of the tournament in the sense that he had a DQ that he got through previously. But that's the first one he played today. And all of a sudden, He's already in losers. It's that kind of tournament today, man. It is. There's a lot of good players in losers. I mean, especially that soon. It's it's Scar, man. So yeah. it's either, either Slayer or Scar. It doesn't matter. The end result is going to be one of them uh, on the lower side of the bracket. But you know what? Sometimes getting knocked in the lower side of the bracket, sometimes it's just that 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 perfect little kick in the ass that you need to, to really mm. like, tone it up and be like, all right, man. Some players, you know, when they're, it, it's kind of like the, I remember a long time ago, Justin Wong saying that at tournaments, he doesn't eat because he feels yeah. he gets too comfortable. So sometimes when you sit in the winner's bracket, you're, you're comfortable because you're like, oh, whatever, I, I got to lose two sets to be out of this tournament. And then once you're in that lower bracket, you're like, uh, I'm no longer comfortable. I'm jittery. I'm antsy. And now I can play, you know, at a better level. So personally, I use coffee for that effect. But if you need to get a loss for that you to be feeling the jittery and the uh, and the awake feeling, do what you got to do. All right, we're moving on. It's going to be <laughs> Gur already in the King of the Hill, and his opponent will be Doom. This is in Pool Three, I believe. Yes, yes, this should be pool three. Yeah, pool three. This, one, this one was, I think, the most stacked pool out of all of them. So, again, if you guys want to follow along at home, uh, the link should be in the chat as long as, yeah, it's been summoned by iBracket command over and over and over again. Uh, you guys want to follow along at home, look at pool three and look at how many good players are in this pool. It is absolutely insane. Uh, you know, all throughout here, we have Gur, we have Doom, uh, Fierce, uh, Deadly Rebel, Red Nose, Ludi, Full Auto, Combat, so many good players. I mean, I feel like we can watch all these on stream and we'll have a great time. But, of course, you know, we want to be fair to competitors. We don't want to make everybody wait all day, all long, all long, all day. And uh, we're just going to, you know, do as many as that we can. But, Doom, if you are ready to go, the invite should have been sent out to you. Uh, and if not, please give us your PSN here in the chat. Right. Well, Doom may be playing in Combat League right now. <laughs> That's the best way. The That's best the rumor. Way. That's oh, okay. He's on his way now. All right. Cool. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. We're ready to go. And uh, I, I can't wait. So, Gur is one of those players, especially in the hands of, like, when he's using Gearus, like, yeah. it, I, I feel like he knows his neutral is so good 
to the point where like his opponent like doesn't want to move. They're just like low sand trap, low sand trap, low sand trap, and and they're scared. And like that's exactly when Gur is most comfortable. It's like, all right, you're too scared to wiggle around. Here come these body splashes. Uh, here come you know these command grabs, and and I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see how Doom deals with this because this is a very very tough opponent here. Uh, Gur did win a tournament not too long ago. He won uh, Honeybee's Swarm Series. Oh, that's right. Uh, the other day, I think I was. Uh, that was also Friday night. Yeah, that character fits him to a T. If you think about the characters that he's played in his life, talking about command grab characters, and you're talking about weirdo runaway semi zoner characters, right? You think about sort of his career across Injustice, in MKX, Injustice 2, it's really been those archetypes. And this single character, this time, this variation of Gear specifically, is all of that stuff encapsulated. It's the perfect character for Gur. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I absolutely agree. A weirdo runaway command grab character, right? Like, it's just a bizarre mix. That's what he's got. He's a pain in the ass. We're also going to see the, uh, the, the, the the buffed breakaway here from uh, Gears, so to speak. The running back in time, Gear, Gear, mm -hmm. like using that. It's one of those one of those tools that you have to get used to at first. Like, everybody was really strange about it. They're like, oh, I don't think it's that good. But if you know the timing, you know where you're going to end up. I think it's I think it's a great tool. All right, so now this time we see Doom and not playing any games. He's going right into Ringmaster. I don't see Ten Hut, and you know I think this is Doom at his high at his highest level. Got to do what you got to do. Wow, back one actually moved her back out of the grab stick. That was rad. What a first round by Doom right there. Really, really good rounds. Okay. okay. Yeah, hit confirming. What's going to be any kind of mix here? Oh, he thought maybe he was going to jump. Maybe he was going to disrespect. Uh, so Gur just kind of playing it a little safe here. Ooh, punish. Whoa, well, I'm surprised not. Yeah, I'm surprised. It's it's very, very tough loop to punish. Oh, getting hit there. And once that crushing blow activates, it negates the sand. Even if it's out there, that sand clone does go away. Follow this block here from Doom to be able to move a little bit sooner. Just basic defense here by Gur. Yeah. And mostly Doom hopping around. Got one hit. Yes, this time he's in there. Okay, getting a little trickier. He's he, Gur's playing it very safe right now. I'm not yeah. to commit to like any real crazy command grabs. Mostly just down ones, down one ones. Yeah, like that. And I'm not, I, I think right there, Doom is like, huh. like I'm scared of it. I'm scared of it. I'm jumping right afterwards. So Gur needs to kind of. <laughs> Gur, out of there. Yeah, just down four. Very safe. You're absolutely right there. Oh. It wasn't fast enough. Tried it, no punish, but here's Gur for the round ending. Very, very scary stuff. Very scary stuff. And I guess like a lot of Gears players would have just kind of done Fatal Blow back. Um, but, but Sonya's is one of the tougher ones to punish. It's not super duper easy. It's the threat. Yeah, I there it is, finally exploded. Now, Gur's not trying to get any whiff uh, low sand traps for the crushing blow. I saw whiff one, but then afterwards went for, you know, a tricky hit. Woo. Very, very light pressure by Gur. <laughs> for the flawless block and ends up working out, luckily for him, one of the up two. It looked like Gur was trying to go for the teleport there from the sand. Oh, do oh, it. Punish. Doom's doing a good job of minding his spacing, you know, uh, trying to just be able to back away enough from Gur that when he jumps in, he can punish him. Chance for pressure? Doesn't really use it. Gonna pop? Yes, gonna pop. Oh. In there! Only the grab, though. That could have been a lot worse, David. That could have been a lot worse. Absolutely right. Even there! No whiff punish. And now there is that fatal to contend with on both sides. Oh my god, Doom jumped when Gur had Fatal? He right, jumped? Yeah, exactly my thoughts, yeah. He jumped again? Yeah, there! These are definitely chances for Fatal. I'm surprised that we're not seeing it out of Gur. There's 15 seconds left, David. Look Just... at the time. Look at the time. 13 now. The man's there. He explodes. Chip damage twice. 10 seconds. Oh god, the drone drop! Sick five! Oh no, he jumped and instead is Fatal Blow from Ringmaster Sonya. Oh. Just a Hail Mary. I understand the Hail Mary in that situation. Four seconds left, you gotta get something. You're running out of time, make it happen right now. Fatal Blow's the way to do that. I get it, I'm just surprised that Gur moved in that situation. Yeah, I'm surprised too. And, and I, I guess it's just 
Gurr didn't think that Duke, because because like I, I guess Gurr didn't realize how close he was in hell, and and that that maybe he, he didn't realize that he still had a life lead. And Doom, it was do or die for him. He was literally like, was, yeah. I'm gonna hit this. If it doesn't work, like I lose. If it does work, I win. Cool. That, that's better than sitting here and doing nothing. Um, I was a little surprised too that Gurr actually moved forward. During yeah. those times, he had a life lead. It wasn't by a lot, but he began to sort of inch forward a little bit. And that's actually why he got clipped by the fatal blow. He was closer than I feel like he needed to be. I don't know. I'd be very curious to know what that decision was about. So game one goes to Doom. Very close. Super close. Super close. Like nail biter down to the wire. Literally one decision, uh, you know, made the difference. And you know, Gurr's been here, you know, a competitor uh, through and through for a very long time. So, you know, he understands. He knows what you have to do in the scenario. You got to just keep trekking on forward. Like it wasn't that bad. Oh, it's the overhead. We didn't really see Doom going too much into these crazy 50-50s from Sonya last game, but I feel like it was because Gurr was just doing a good job of keeping him out. Just just keeping Sonya at bay and forcing her to rely more on projectiles. Trade's not working out too well for Gurr. Yeah, tried to get something, not quite. Mm. Trying to get, I love the zoning right here. Fatal though. And the whip, what a little backwards movement. Doom is killing it right now. Is that the round it is? Yeah, man. Lovely that's spacing. Like, the Lanzi's punish beautiful. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, Gurr just committing a lot in the air, and Doom just, like, backing off. Like, he, he's not committing too much because he knows Gurr's going to get a little too antsy. Mm. Oh, with that crushing blow. Big, big damage to the ribs here. His ribs are already back. <laughs> the drone drop. Good block here from Gurr. Behind so. her, and obviously Doom knows. Yeah, that's, what, that's why he's not amplifying anything. That's really what it mm -hmm. is. You don't want to amplify when that clone is behind you because you amplify, you're going to have more recovery, and uh, that's when, when Gurr can really do some good damage. A little too far away for the extra corner damage. Here's Gurr, though. It's really the first time we've seen extended corner pressure from him. He's got it. He had one moment before he gave it up earlier in the last game. Here it is. This is what he wanted previously, expecting the break. I think Gurr didn't want him to to get hit by that down four. He was expecting them to be closer. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. oh no cancel, it's fine though. Fatal's still there. And grab, regular grab, he gets the snowball. Here comes Gurr. Oh, flawless ball, that was so key. That was so oh, key. crucial. Gurr's alive. Oh, David, I'm scared. Up three. Oh, up two! The very rare up two from Sonya. Well, super smart, right? Her up three would have whiffed in that situation, and instead it's going to be up two to catch the jump. Extremely smart little mix-up, understanding there. Defensive mix-up, right? Bringing out the different one than Gurr expected. Doom in that game looked even better than he did at the start. In that game one, again, super close. It came down to that fatal blow at the very end. This one you could not say the same. This was Doom from start to finish. Oh yeah, yeah, in control completely, in control completely, and, and smart recognition there. And I guess Gurr was thinking the same thing I was thinking, and, and saying that like maybe he's gonna go uh, with an up three there, just because like I feel like that's a very common move at high level play. Like people don't like relying on up threes. But when it comes to do or die, you need that last little bit. If you see your opponent getting aggressive, up three is the way to go, fully invulnerable. And it was just you know it doesn't combo, but he didn't need it to combo. But that up two counteracted that so perfectly there. And Gurr definitely a um, little upset by that. No no way that feels, <laughs> no way that feels good. Stand down. It's been a lot of neutral control. It's been zoning out of Doom. Occasionally pressure. We did see the overhead mix-up. We did see the low mix-up in that last game from Doom as well. So he's beginning to bring in all sides of this. He's doing a great job at staying patient when the clone is behind him as well. It's going to be tough for Gerd. The way the Doom's playing right now is extremely strong. Yeah, and a big reminder to all you guys, this is a first to three the whole way through, not just for the winners or top eight. Like, we're doing everything first to three. Uh, so, mm. oh, that was good. That was good. Getting hit there. Uh, I don't know if on purpose, but it was good that Doom yeah. can just recognize the scenario. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I'll my tick command grab will hit, and it, it people don't pick up on that, you know? <laughs> yeah. It that just never like, happens to me. <laughs> yeah, you, you got the OS down. 
down trying to get down four underneath. We've seen that a bunch, but not quite at the right range. God, this the little back and forth we're seeing here. Okay, all right. Doom is killing it. Not worried about that fatal. And then right there to seal it, it's match point Doom threatening the 3 0 Gur, one of the strongest players. Yeah, Super was, good play by Doom right now. Yeah, and that was a scary uh, short hop because Gur, if he didn't move, he would that short hop would have whiffed. And Doom just knew he was going to get aggressive, possibly knew he was going to go for a throw. No anti air. <laughs> over it even? Yeah, it's a beautiful low crushing move there to get right over uh, you know, the down four, which is a, a good footsie tool here from Gears. Mm-hmm. Doom is away. Just at a pretty safe spot. We've seen the trades a lot, and those just have not been in Gears' favor with the Sand Trap. There's a chance. Okay. Beacon's pressure with it. Oh my god. Yeah, a lot of, you gotta watch out for that overhead drone drop. This man is freestyling right now. Oh, oh yeah, 100% freestyle. Hold on a second, Gurr's got Fatal Blow. He can make this comeback. <gasps> Never mind, he's dead. <laughs> Doom taking a 3-0 over Gurr. Who would have thought? Who would have thought here? Going with the regular friendship, we're all friends here. And uh, Doom moves on in this bracket. And this is a, like I said, this is, gotta be the most stacked bracket out of all these uh a, a, a long time even though doom's moving on you know he's gotta play abyss and then most likely the winner of combat and uh deadly you know the winner out of combat full auto deadly rebel Ludi, so many good players in this pool and doom still has a lot of work cut out for him but amazing job doom three over that i is was expecting that to be a close match I thought I didn't think that would be a blow up either way. I think that's what I'm surprised about, right? Not necessarily that Doom ends up on top, but that it is a 3-0 rather than 3-2, like something close. But it was just dominance in zoning, in footsies, in pressure, in the few defensive situations that he needed it as well. I only recall two command grabs that led Gerd to the corner. One of them, he backed off immediately. There was no pressure. Only once did he actually try for the pressure. And he still lost in that scenario when Sonya had to wake up up too. So even the few little defensive moments were still controlled by Doom. Uh, extremely, yeah. extremely strongly played. Yeah, no, it was it was it was great, man. It was great. He was just sitting back, and you know, a few times Gur got the right teleport when Doom, you know, went for an amplified ring, and you know, even in that scenario, you know, Gur got like a regular throw where he could have got a full punish, uh, but but Doom was in control, man. Like without a doubt, yeah. looking at all three of those games, Doom was in full full control. So uh, my heart goes out to you know the rest of the losers bracket because now Gur is in the Shark Tank with you guys. And uh, that's not going to be an easy one. Uh, I don't know what match we have up next. Looks like we have Han Rashid versus Reek. Okay. Uh, and again, if you guys want to follow along, the bracket is being uh, commented here in the chat over and over again. You guys can click and see just how incredible these pools are, especially pool three, man. That one is super stacked. Uh, do you remember where Han Rashid is? In which pool? I do. He's in pool number six, and I'm looking at it right now, and he 3 0'd Gross does not say that Gross was DQ'd. It says 3-0 over Gross. So shout-outs to Han starting out on a pretty good foot right there. He then beat Shadow X 3-0, and now it's going to be versus Reek. So Han has played two matches, hasn't yet lost a game. All right, let's see if we can uh, get them in here. Uh, do we have some PSNs? I'd like to uh, help out and just try to get these guys in here as quickly as possible so we can see this incredible uh, action. And uh, Reek uh, looks like, you know, made it all the way here to winter semis, uh, just going 3-0 uh, over Cumzy. And, uh, you know, this this pool, is, is, it's, got some, it's got some players in here. Uh, right now, too easy, playing against uh, Black Lives Matter. And he's going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of great sets, man. And these are just pools. There's eight pools jam-packed full of incredible players. Yeah, just to let people know some updates. Some people have made it into winners finals with their pools. Scar's done that. He'll play the winner of One Wolf or DKB. Samij is in winners of his. He can play the winner of Afterburn and Parsa. In pool three, just saw Doom move on. He'll play against Abyss. Ah, the other side's pretty not done yet. Uh, it's going to be Mercy Not Given versus either Emperor Aztec or Blackout in pool four winner finals. Pool five winner finals is going to be Biohazard versus Winter Guy. We're already there. Biohazard just 3-0'd Sunio. Nice. 
Uh, six, we're talking about right now. We're going to see Han Rashid versus Reek, hopefully. In the winner's finals of Pool 7, you got Leon versus Get Wrecked. And in Pool number 8, how far are we in this one? Eh, we still got a lot of work to do in that one. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, it's, it's turning out to be a pretty good one. Uh, a lot of DQs, but, you know, you got Alcatraz in Pool 8, uh, Medi and Just. You know, moving on uh, over Trap Hustler and I, I guess uh, K7. And uh, yeah, man. A lot. So it looks like we're going to be. Okay. So we're going to move on from this one because we actually don't have the PSNs for uh, Reek. So we can't get uh, that up on stream, it sounds like. Reek is in the chat, though. Oh. Okay. He he said it's little oozy. Oh, here, here we go, man. All right, we're back on track. All right, we're gonna stick you just just in time, Reed. Yeah. Just in time from the glorious uh, honor of being on hungry. All right. So Reed, I got the invite out to you, uh, Han Rashid. Do we have Han Rashid here, son, Mr. Producer? Uh, Han Rashid. Who's Han Rashid playing in this game? Do you... Ah, uh, Lou. Playing Unless play. he's picked up somebody else. Long time, Lou. Oh, he's in here. Cool, cool, cool. In the uh, chat, I should say. Yeah, Han Rashid, if you can put a spirit. Yes, then. Yes, then. Please. You know, sometimes people like to put FTC in there, or they stay. All right, Nip's got you. All right, cool. Here we go then. Yep, he's in. Sweet. All right, what are we gonna see out of Reek? Reek uh, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's not easy to three zero somebody, especially so late into you know the the, the round. So, um, I'm I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic to have a a, a very close bout here. <laughs> My cat just broke into the office here. What's up, man? Nice. It's a little, little scamp there. Alright. See, I'll, I wish I wish one of my cats could open the All they have to do is throw up any plastic. <laughs> it. So it's actually going to be Fujin here from Han Rashid. I'm happy to see this. Please don't eat my cheese. Oh, I wasn't talking to you. Everything that's yours is also there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't think cheese would do well for a kitty cat. Uh, I, I really, I'm really, uh, I, I, so I've seen him play Fujin a few times on a few folks' stream. Uh, he's got great execution and movement in general, and I think that did great for him with other characters that he's played, like Lou I was talking about. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm excited to see how he does here with uh, Cloudwalk with Fujin. Yeah, the, the, the movement here from Fujin is very, very fluid. Like, that, that's. That's what you see, like, about that's what stands out to me about the character right away. Um, forward three is also going to play a big part in uh, getting under these projectiles. Back one, one good stuff here. Uh, he's going to amplify it to just kind of either make sure it's safe or maybe catch his opponent trying to, to punish the unamplified version of it. Uh, right now, Reek in a really bad spot. Yeah, that's going to be a punish, straight punish. Uh, surprise, Han Rashid didn't go, which is like a regular back throw uh, to get a, a corner positioning that should have been fast enough to punish that. But you know what? It doesn't look like he's too worried about it. Good flawless block up two. That's going to be big punishment city here in favor of Sonia. Looking for neutral jump, possibly to, to whiff out that up three. Pressure opportunity comes. Pretty light. Ah, nice. Taking control just like that. A lot of staring at each other in this. Neither one being too offensive about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that up two. That up two, man. A very unique hitbox there. Not super traditional, not super consistent. But you know what? Every character. Yes, very, very nice conversion right there. I like the idea from it. Uh, from Reek, I should say, with down two, but. Fujin was just above it. Loaded on through, it's gonna be game one. Going to Han Rashid. 
Yeah, dominant, dominant. I mean, Reek was finding his footing, uh, you know, as round number two went by. It could have gone either way, but it was kind of like because he had Han Rashid down below 30, uh, you know, giving him access to that fatal blow was a clear opening uh, for taking that full game. So Han Rashid is definitely going crazy right now. It looked good. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. No, no big risk I'm seeing here from Fujin either. Like he's not going for, you know, these nutty like full screen Skywalker into, you know, the, the kick attack. That's like, you know, then you got to put a guessing game whether he's going to amplify it or not amplify it. Um, he's just being very, very solid. Poking whenever it's his turn and, uh, you know, using that back one one to an incredible movement to fill the gap between himself and the opponent. Long-time top player here in SoCal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, as you said, Reek didn't do badly. He began that last game by having a big life lead that, of course, Han Rashid made a huge comeback on. And then the second round looked good as well. Lost, but, you know, wasn't getting busted. No, no, definitely not. Nothing to be ashamed about. Into the pressure. It might be more mix-up heavy style. Okay, maybe. Oh, beauty. Great awareness by Han. Yeah, there definitely are some mix-ups in here. Back one, interesting timing. Definitely not to his benefit. And now with Fatal on deck. Oh! Out of the sky. Oh, that's his chip, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's pretty much nothing he could do there at that point. Round two, fight. So Hanrushi's starting well. I mean, you got to counter it to hit at some point in each match. <laughs> Every single match. It's a very, very easy requirement, which is just, yeah. it has to hit. <laughs> oh, with the whip footage, that was beautiful right there. What awareness again by Hanrushi. Looking great this whole time. Yeah, that back one, yeah, one. Here. Yeah, the back one one is so is so well complemented by Fujin's mobility and his ability to just kind of back dash after things. So you know he, he kind of forces you to not want to press a button. Good throw, escape there. Good reactions from Han Rashid, blocking all these. So right many. Again. <laughs> that is flawless, blockable. But I haven't seen Reek go for it once this set. Mm -hmm. I guess he's like committed to the idea of like, oh, oh my god, did it confirm with forward three? Yeah, it's by funny. Han Rashid, but as you saw, that was intended to be a fatal blow out of Reek, and instead he got slid right through just before the armor, I guess, activated. Yeah. So good stuff here from uh, from Han Rashid, keeping it. Keeping it consistent, keeping it strong and, and looking great, man. Looking incredible here. I haven't seen uh, a great Fujin like this in a very long time. And this is it's also very impressive because this is, you know, the, the newest, one of the newest characters added to the roster of this game. So, you know, when you look at it, you have the least amount of time with this character. But, you know, obviously, you know, the mechanics of the game, you know, what things to look for and Han Rashid able to just apply all, all the old knowledge into the new character. So Reek has gone for a switch here. Going with Noob. Which one did he go with on this? Yeah, most likely seeing double? That's no. Good, I guess. no. This is, yeah, this is seeing double. Yeah, so this one's gonna have a little bit more, you know, mid to full screen presence. Uh, probably, you know, it's, it's probably nice to have a projectile that stops forward three, but you know, you gotta be fast enough to stop it. As you can see there, Han Rashid just out the gate going with forward three. Getting the telly slam here. I like the fake there, throwing out that normal, seeing it whiff, and then telling your opponent a normal is coming, but then switching it up with the throw. No punish there on the short hop. I think Reek needs to dip in and, and go for some delay wake up buttons. I'm actually surprised that the clone goes under the Skywalk. I did, didn't expect that to be the case. I don't mean low clone. I mean, he put out mid clone briefly and it just, yeah. that man ran right over it. Yeah, it's a, it looks like it just hits like a real mid there. 
And uh, right now, Reek finding a lot more success with this character. It could be a matchup thing, or it just could be like, you know, he's a little bit more comfortable with it. I want to see some down pokes in a slide here, but we're not seeing it. <gasps> that could have been it. That, he had Fatal Blow. That could have been all over there for uh, for Reek, but luckily he did find those two hits. Even though they were blocked, they were blocked right before Han Rashid got that first bar of defensive meter, so he wasn't able to access last breath. On Rashid being real patient here in case of teleport. Yep, in. Nice. Gets another couple on that KB. And that's the, it has never come to follow Spock. So I think Han feels pretty comfortable about doing that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels good about it. And it looks like Reek just wants to, you know, because you have to flawless block and then spend resources. Reek would rather capitalize on no Amplify uh, as a punish. Yeah, he's, he's swinging back after every time, just assuming we won't Amplify it. Mm -hmm. Another couple. Here's Han. Good damage here. Oh, no, that was a big chance. That actually gave Fatal Blow to Reek. And now Reek on reaction could do it. What Why the jump? It wasn't kill. Oh, boy, that down two got punished a couple of times. He is out there for a long while. On Rashid with the easy back one both times for the punish. Yeah, that down two from Noob has a really good hitbox, but it, it, like you said, it does recover. Like it should, uh, you know, so so whenever that does whiff or, you know, you're blocking it, you know, look to challenge and punish. Oh, the trade, the air to air here. Oh, up three. Wait, the first time. Yeah. Full match. Oh, he tried it, he tried it, surely. Not quite in time. And it looked like somehow their Reek uh, got, was able to grab the extended hurt box here from Fujin from doing that down three. Super close to getting fatal. Yeah, he actually just gave his opponent fatal with that little hit. Yeah, you got to be careful with that. Failed escape here. I believe Noob has it on his uh, forward throw, the crushing blow. He, was no, he did it. He brought it out. Now, this is going to be really close. I'm not sure it will kill. We got to see the shields. Yeah, here come the shields. Yeah, it's really close. I don't think so. He'll be good. He woke up with a genius. Oh my God, and the tech as well. Down to the wire. Oh, the down four. What a great normal here. I mean, even if that does get blocked, he's able to cancel and to slide. And then, you know, once you condition your opponent to watch out for the slide, that's when it gets a little crazier. And Reek on the board here. Uh, from after being on the brink of a 3 0 uh, knock into the loser's bracket, on the board, ready to go, ready to play. Reek is here, ready to play. It's hard for me to really even identify what was, what was so different about that character that he did do better. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it just felt like it was more about individual interactions that maybe could have happened with Sonya as well. I mean, maybe he just feels more comfortable with the character. It didn't seem like the character's tools per se were the reason. Maybe more just that in those mix-up situations, in whether to jump in at this moment or not, whether to press a button here or not, he felt uh, like he was making the right ones more often. Yeah, I mean, it could have been that. Uh, you know, Noob Cybot also has like a, a bunch of different uh, a lot more options at, you know, mid to full screen that it's a little bit hard, a little less linear than, you know, Sonya's. Whereas like Han Rashid's like, all right, I just got to worry about when you throw a projectile. And when I think you're going to throw it, I'm going to jump in. Whereas Reek, you know, he could down four, down two, uh, low slide, mid clone, like a lot of different options. Good block, but again, no punish. No punish. All those short hops are very, very punishable. Mm -hmm. Nice pick up here by Han. He's got the corner for himself, the knockdown. There's no meter. Oh, it just came. Yeah, it just got here. Right there. In the sky. Met him. That was on reaction. No need for the bet. No, no need. No need. All a, a textbook decision there. Oh, that may be it. Yeah, back one. Tried to down two to get. Uh, yeah, he, he, he knew the, the, the breakaway was coming, but it almost looked like he couldn't do anything about it. And then right back in after that. Okay. Han taking a little bit of a risk, but he was right. It's match point. 
Yeah, I would definitely say that swinging out of turn right after that drill, even if you amplify it, like, you know, you sh shouldn't be, you know, advancing forward, but, you know, sometimes the unpredictable thing is the right thing to do. Get off on this. Try for the whiff punish, it's not quite there. He tried it again with the wish punish. Oh no. I'm First surprised. big bet that we've seen like that in a game. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he didn't dip in and go for down two crushing blow. That's usually an easy indicator of down two crushing blow, even after you block it. Yep, it's a big old high. Finish the string. That string is very difficult to punish. You know, you got to forward dash and then block again, and then you don't know if he's going to cancel. So many options. Oh, there are definitely some missed opportunities here for Reek. He's got the corner. What a whip punish! Broke at the first possible chance. Oh, this may be it. He's gonna do oh, okay, it works out. It worked out, but it didn't need to be like that. He went for the style. The style failed him. And yet it all worked out in the end. Honda Sheet takes three games to one. Oh, that that that's heartbreaking. Uh -huh. That shows you you don't ever put down the controller. Like it's not over until it's over. Han Rashid was looking again. He could have gone. I think he could have gone right into Fatal Blow, but instead went for the higher execution requirement combo. And then at the end there, what he wanted was forward three Fatal Blow. He did forward three too early. Forward three did not come out, so he just got with Fatal Blow. And if Reek was paying attention a little closer, he would have been able to block and full combo punish and possibly take that round. Oh, All right. so we are most of the way through most of these pools. This win right here puts Han Rashid into winner's finals of his pool, pool number six. On the other side, looks like too easy. Black Lives Matter have to play. Winner of that will play against uh, Payne. Went through some of the other ones before. Still some work to be done in some. We're going to get some of those matches up for you in a little bit. But first, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more very soon. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We got more Mortal Kombat 11 for you here in the North American scene. I am Ultra David. With me is Darth Arma. And we're going to be moving on to the next match very shortly. We're inviting the players now. This should be Too Easy versus Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Too Easy, uh, definitely a tough competitor uh, through and yeah. through for a very long time since uh, I want to say his his breakout was during the the MKX days. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just consistent, especially great results, beginning of the game's life, you know, winning tournaments here and there. So I, I don't expect to see anything shy of, you know, top level play here. And we saw him just the other night when we were doing the tournament uh, for Rectify. That's right. That's where right. he got... Mm, fifth fourth or fifth something like that yeah uh, so he was definitely in top eight and he, it was i believe shang actually that he played before he went back to sub which i thought was interesting i mean i've seen him play other characters in the past seen him play a couple of ninjas for example but uh I, i'm not real sure what to expect here yeah yeah it was uh he, he switched over to sub zero for that last one but yeah. um you know, I really like his uh, his uh, his scorpion whenever I see it. But he's someone who doesn't necessarily pick like the the top top tier characters, but more as like I think when he picks characters, he likes picking characters that are very polarizing and very different, so that he can mm -hmm. rely on certain tools for certain matchups. Kind of like you know, he likes to to walk his own path. Like oh, I don't want to play all the characters that everyone else is playing, mm -hmm. but I want to have a vers uh, versatile like set of tools you know i'll have a teleport when i need to teleport or i'll have an amplified ice ball when i need to shut off all projectiles like stuff like that or 50 50s when i need them uh but it looks like we're ready to go man black lives matter and okay. too easy uh here in the king of the hill ready to go man too easy is going to be on the player one side and i can't wait to see who he picks um i believe black Lives matters usually goes with uh jacks i want to say this is jack's gameplay normally well it's starting now no need to speculate. We'll shortly find out. Maybe I'm saying that because of the, the title card. He definitely has his jacks in the title card. Yeah. He's got not only just one jacks, he's got both jacks. Old jacks does. in the title card. What do we got? What do we got? Ah, random select out of too easy. Was it random out select? Uh, not random. My, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. Hidden select. <laughs> Hidden random select. select. He's got the only the only two players on this planet that can do random select 
random hidden are titanium tigers and the mighty unjust <laughs> i'm convinced nobody else can do it they're the only ones that can do something like that uh too easy going with shang here and mm -hmm. and looks like black lives is going with Jax. gotta watch out for uh gotta watch out for those uh, that, that command grab is the one that scares me the most <laughs> this intro always cracks me up. Mind games. It is not your mind, Alright, so which variation is variation three, Shane? Uh I think it was just uh, variation one with the uh ground skull. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah, warlock. Looking for the crushing blow there. Start things off. Oh hold mm. head, but I'm surprised he didn't amplify, but I guess he just wanted the super plus frames to possibly go with something else, but you know oh, ho, ho. Yeah, nice. And that's off the bar just like that with threatening. Yeah, that's scary too because when you're done rolling, you are recovering. So, you know, too easy, confident enough to say, you know what, I will flawless block this uh, because I will be able to block in time. Yeah, I like the block there. There was no possibility of the grab, there's no meter. So just patient stuff out of too easy. That said, never count on this character right here. Yeah, it begins a snowball. Next hit can seal it. If it's the fatal, it's not. It's a jump kick meeting him in the sky. Yeah, that's also an interesting exchange there because Too Easy was the one that jumped second. And that's very, very tough to get those startup frames. Uh, but Shang's jump kick is very, very good. Very mm -hmm. solid jump kick all around. For sure. Okay, yep, using the rocket. Here comes the rocket. Yeah, yeah. Jax's projectiles from the uh, from from the the heated up arms is very, very good. But mm -hmm. got to load that up. It's like currency there. Yeah, super cool design. Getting those hands hot yet again. No anti-airs. Back in, though. Yeah, it looks like Too Easy was looking for a throw. Oh, oh he's got hot hands. Yeah, he's got super hot hands. He's backing off, though. He's, he's got good. some rockets. He's playing it super safe. Yeah, I like this a lot. Yeah, just controlling a little bit here. The shotgun as well. Nice. A lot of flawless blocks coming out there from Too Easy. I don't expect him to to not try to flawless block that last one, but maybe that was his, uh, you know, that spelled his demise here. Beautiful pickup, great awareness right there. The hands are hot. Those hands are they hot. They are hot. Oh, the low, the unsafe low, brought it in. Mix up time. Lovely answer. He tried it. That would have been so sick. That would have been insane. That would have been absolutely insane. <laughs> here from Too Easy. Oh, in the uh, overhead by itself. No, oh no, he had already spent. Well, okay. Yeah, not sure what. Maybe Too Easy was going for a specific combo. That yeah, was it down two into down one, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe like down. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. No clue here. But it's okay. Too Easy looking like in full control. Mm -hmm. There it was. Yep. Now that's going to be a little while. Oh, that's maybe a chance to move forward. He thought so too. It was just a little bit too late. Straight shot comes in and seals the deal. And I guess too easy thought that he didn't have enough health to withstand just a regular string. And, you know, he's just kind of trying to keep it safe. Play it safe. No need to, you know, chalk it up to any kind of execution, even if it's rather easy. Uh, I wonder if he could have done a different button into maybe ground skulls. Um, but, you know, that was, that was a close one. You don't want to let Jax live especially if he has that fatal blow still available to mm -hmm. it's very very fast it does hit as a high now but you know not only does it get him you know 30 something percent as a as a regular fatal blow combo uh but it also puts his arms at maximum heat yes. and you know in doing so he could either he's got the crushing blow and the forward throw set up or on the uh what is that forward two two what is it? What's that string? Uh, the, I know he's got a regular string, a mid-hitting string uh, that goes into a, uh, a crushing blow. So a little bit of a guessing game there. You never, never want to be on the wrong side of that, especially if you, you know, could have ended it easily with just a regular combo. So risky, risky business here from Too Easy. Let's see how he's going to go into the rest of this game. Kind of showing little tales of like, you know, what each player wants to do too easy, jumping back at the round start. And uh, while Black Lives wants to jump forward and he's, you know, just trying to get that offense started. Good punish here. Reversal punish right out the gate. I don't think those are, I don't know whose favor those trades are in. I mean, at this life lead, I, I think it's probably too easy, but you know, Black Lives. Oh, got it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's the issue with bringing in Corpse Drop. You guess on the wrong spot, here comes Jax, right? Two-thirds screen approach. Yeah, exactly. And it's not its not an auto-tracking move. You gotta specifically put it there. Ah, beautiful. 
Yeah, too easy. Maintain pressure there. I don't think too easy was quite expecting that. So round goes over to Black Lives Matter. I'm seeing that a lot from too easy. Like he'll block two or three things, and then like I don't know if he's expecting a stagger or expecting a throw. But I, I think too easy just needs to be a little bit patient. I know he won the last game, but you know it, it's never a win or a victory is no excuse to not adapt. Here's the business now. The hands are getting hot. Oh yeah, they're gonna be toasty. Yes. Mm. Ton of damage right there. Good, good damage here. Hold on, too easy. Battles, he's got the corner now. I'm not sure he'll stay in. Wow, corpse drop point blank. Punish right there. And there's Black Lives Matter taking it. I loved not just his pressure game. I loved the distance game. He was throwing shotguns at the right spots, getting knockdowns with them. He was throwing rockets occasionally. He would level up the arms sometimes. He had the back forward to movement to get back in. It was that game that he played from like half screen to two thirds screen that I think allowed him to get in, right? That was the sort of setup. It was Shang not feeling comfortable with zoning. And if Jax can make his opponent uncomfortable with that and get in, you know, the mix up start, the hot hands start, the damage comes pouring out. Yeah, no, and that, that, that's beautifully put there. Like, even though Jax is kind of seen as this aggressive character, he can do some full screen things there. He can mm -hmm. do the ground pound, the, the, mm -hmm. the grenade launcher, like so many different options uh, for this character. So he doesn't have to just play up front. And yeah, back forward too, that little uh, that, that, the little push he does, very good mobile tour, or basically a tool that gives Jax his mobility. And that's going to play a big part in these point black, uh, point uh, blank corpse drops here. Mm -hmm. So too easy's got to be careful of them. He got punished a lot in that last game. Trying to level up those hands. Definitely intending to try to zone out, right? That's certainly the intention here from too easy. Trying to throw those corpses. Lots of dead bodies coming down from the sky. And even just the pushback of those straight skulls is important, but there's not much of a life lead. There's a tiny one, but it's really not much. And certainly not what you want from a zoning character versus a character that is really conceived of more as having to get in. If you don't have the big life leap from far away, then you're not doing what you want to do. Oh, yeah. that was great, though. Yeah, really, really good jump in. Woo, ready. <laughs> really good awareness of the jump in there. Level up. This is close, man. This is down to the wire. This is very, 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 very close. Trying to bait the dash punch. You could see it. There it is, it finally came. Too Easy had done stand one a couple of times to just make his opponent think that it was a straight call a skull that he could react to. And that's not what Black Lives Matter got baited by, right? He didn't wait. Uh, he did wait for the exact right moment to bring out the fatal blow. And right now, Black Lives technically in a lead here in this set, but Too Easy still has access to his fatal blow if he does go down that low. Good challenge here from Too Easy, connecting with that low. Oh, it almost looked like he baited it out, but didn't realize how fast Jax actually recovers. Nice. That was a great punish. Here he goes. The first time, I don't think he's brought that out yet. And yet the first time that it came, Black Lives was absolutely ready. Oh yeah, yeah, he was ready. It's it, Shang has a lot of reward with that string in the corner. So it's like almost like if your back's up against the wall, like it, it's, a, it's an extra reason for Shang to go for the full thing. And I think sure. that's what Black Lives was riding on. It's just all about, you know, the, 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 the reward. What is at stake here? Oh, the grab this time. Just chipping from afar, yeah, it looked like it was a neutral duck that was not gonna cut it versus the grenade. Nice work by Black Lives. Again, it's the distance game. It's not just the pressure, it's the distance game that I'm very impressed by out of this Jax. Yeah, 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 very, very a well uh, spacing here from Jax. You know, being able to play both. Uh, I don't know who Too Easy's gonna go with. I don't know if he's gonna want, you know, we, we saw him, you know, losing before with Shang and uh, the Rectify tournament. Uh, a few days ago, and then he switched over to sub. It didn't work out for him, but you know it could be a matchup where he's going to have to, you know, be a little bit more controlling of the full screen game. Amplified Ice is a really nice tool at full screen. Only costs you one bar. Doesn't really do anything uh, in terms of like putting you at risk. Uh, and too easy, you know, trying to hold on to as much knowledge as possible for as long as possible here. Highlighting, hitting, select, even though. 
uh, Black Lives Matter isn't able to switch over to a different character. Yeah. Too easy. Sure. Like I want to. I don't. I don't want to give him a- any more. Uh, than I have to. Well, I mean, it's not a big mystery, right? <laughs> It's not a big mystery that it was going to be Sub Zero. Uh, deep Freeze, cold I was shoulder. To pat myself on the back, and I was just like, I think Deep Freeze could really help in this matchup. Okay, either way, this is a really nice skin here from Too Easy. The Gold Sub Zero reminds me of like an open Twix bar. Uh, and it just <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. And that back one, that back one from Sub Zero is so good. It does it as a high, but it is so so good to like kind of just contest, punish jump ins, and punish whiff attempts. Nice little down three. Oh, oh, look at that. Yep, yep, good stuff. I think here with the shoulder. Looking for that neutral jump one. One of the best jump ones in the game. I'm not I'm not up playing. Trust me, it's just one of the best. Oh, nice. At... Yeah, just after trying with the low, he was looking for the break. None came. Oh, God, that's going to Big punish. Yeah, unfortunately, Jax, without hot hands, I spoke too soon. He didn't have him hot. He got it in there, though. He got it in there. He knew. He knew he just needed one more hit. One it's more. Such an interesting hit. character design, man. It's it's so cool to see somebody like Jax who can do three, four hundred damage if he's hot, if he's got the right mix up. Before that, though, he's doing like 130. It's not much. He's got to get the right situation for himself. Yeah, yeah. It, he is just the the, 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 the the snowball character. Like, he has to get going. Momentum is key for Jax. Now, he still does have a command grab, but I don't think he's ever mm -hmm. going out here. Let's see if he goes for it. Too easy. Yeah, too easy. He'll take that. At least the knockdown here. Good. Wow, defense man. has been so strong. Okay, right back in. maximum damage there oh. oh my god yeah i don't think that was intended. Oh. He certainly wanted to be closer for that oh god crushing blow he's got two bars crushing mm. blow he's got two bars mm. Crush oh, what? what there's no way he didn't want it there's no way he didn't want it oh god only the okay overhead <laughs> gotta steal it yeah just spend it all for sure <laughs> oh man that's gotta feel good that's gotta feel good that one mix-up, that huge life lead doesn't matter thanks to that fatal blow that does not scale at all, seemingly. It's a lot. <laughs> oh, he got their time! Aye, oh, yeah, okay, I'm breaking away very fast. Makes sense. Beautiful. Lovely backdash. Use a tiny backdash first to make that whiff. That was really nice. Probably wanted the crush. He's gonna get another chance at it here. Here it is, here it is. Crush those mm -hmm. Spending it all 386. God, throw all of a sudden everything's working out. Or too easy. Oh, hold on though. Into the corner. He's trying to play yes. it. I mean Gotta... he he poked out a turn, but he's trying to play it safe. He's, oh, yeah. No. As soon oh <laughs> drop him, you gonna drop him? You gonna drop him? No. Uh either way, he he, he uh, I was gonna say he's playing it safe, and then he went with for a throw. Um, but I guess he just knew that Black Lives was, was committed 100% to just blocking here. And now, uh, you know, because Too Easy did get that first win here in this set, it's tied up two to two. Uh, Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter does have the option to switch characters, to switch variations. Uh, again, remember, variations count as different characters in this game. Uh, but Too Easy locked here on Sub Zero. What's Black Lives going to do? Jax. Right back to hunker down. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. seem like it's a character problem. No, no, no. I don't think it's a character problem. I mean, that could have been his. It literally came down to that one freeze. And, you know, just the fact that Too Easy had Fatal Blow ready to go. You know, he lost a round. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to, like, not feel robbed in that scenario. Thus, like, you, you go into this downward spiral of, like, bad vibes and bad mentality and you're just like why why is the world like this why is nrs allowing yeah. someone to steal this fate with fatal blow Ooh. got him on the whiff punish instantly breaks out spinning those two bars yeah that's worked each time he's tried it Ooh. stolen turn again yeah, a lot of stolen turns, a lot of poking out of frame. But you know what? That down one, two, even though it doesn't combo, you know, it, you're not used to it. You know, Jax is a very unique character, uh, like you said before. Looking for the neutral duck there. This time, too easy giving him the throw, trying to keep it mixing up. I feel like every mix up's working out. All right, now has got to be the time here. Black Lives Matter's got to get in. 
Not quite there on the jump kick. Close. Here's the confirm. Surely it does come, and it's going to be match point for Too Easy, who I feel like every mix-up worked out. Worst case, it got blocked, right? There was nothing that was punished. He was totally fine the whole time. Yeah, yeah. The, you got to look for those forward twos. Those forward two ice balls, those are the ones uh, that are very, very unsafe. Uh, but it's all up to the opponent to make sure they they pounce on those opportunities. Mm, oh, looking for the low, maybe. Those hands or maybe looking for just down one afterward. Could be. Failed escape that's going to set up the crushing blow on the next back throw if Too Easy decides to use it. Is that safe? I don't know if that chainsaw is safe. Neutral, a neutral jump here. Not sure what he's looking for. Oh. It was the punish that allows the hands to start. Oh. Yep, yeah, they're hot now. Mm. Super sick. Just wants chip at this point, but can't get too risky about it. No, that was the issue, right? Everybody else, sure, you throw that last grenade, but against sub, okay, finally. Match point now for both. Well, you know what? The 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 moral victory there for Too Easy is that he forced him off the breakaway. So if he does hit him again, he's not going to have access to that. Uh, and if he knocks him down, he won't have the wake up. So right now, momentum staying on the side of Black Lives Matter, and he's just going him. <laughs> he stood up for the grab, and he tried to crouch for the mid. Feels bad. Feels bad. <laughs> And very gutsy, being at the other side of the stage, still moving, still jumping preemptively, still trying to level up the hands. Okay. Oh, baby, here comes the overhead. Okay, enough. Okay, well. Oh. Ah, 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 there is a break here, though. Surely. I believe Too Easy still has that throw crushing blow loaded up, but I don't know if he's going to get the opportunity right to do so. Oh, God. He's dead. Got him. Black Lives Matter takes it three games to two. What a set. That was a really, really good set. Came down to the wire. I mean, that could have gone either way. Uh, and it's all about the sex, man. Oh, this is one of the best. <laughs> one of the best. They went, like, so all out for this. With, like, the 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 very, like, old school Jets. transitions in the background. And then everything that's just, like, lighting up. It's so perfect. It's so good. It's so good. The, like, slightly off, not actually copyright infringement uh, epic sax guy. <laughs> riff right it's like not actually a copy so smart it's so funny it's very it's very close i'm sure you were so great in this game yeah. i did appreciate that yeah oh that all was... right well that means that he's moving on that was in pool number six yes yeah yeah and uh continuing on this crazy crazy like onslaught of incredible matches uh our next match is going to be from pool three so again if you guys want to follow along at home this is a winner semi-final of pool three this match is going to be deadly rebel versus combat this how did i look through this pool and not even see that these players were in there somehow i completely missed the bottom half of this bracket which is incredible actually now that i take a closer look at it <laughs> you like looked at it and you're like three names all right we're good keep going i didn't even mention any of them somehow i completely missed that that was rebel and Ludi and full auto and combat like right right there with each other okay a lot of good players man a lot. some good players right there yeah, so it looks like Combat took it 1-3 over Full Auto, and uh, Deadly Rebel, most likely in a nail-biter, took it 3-2 uh, over Ludi. Ludi, who we've been seeing, just playing amazing Cabal lately, but right now we're going to focus on Deadly Rebel, um, one of the best collectors out there. Just been playing collector for the longest time, and I love seeing what he does in, in uh, now that Variation 3 is so strong. He's pretty much playing all these variations, uh, depending on the matchup and mm -hmm. depending on what he needs to do uh, to get the job done. So if we can get Combat and Rebel in here, not sure if you guys are in the stream chat, but it doesn't it doesn't hurt to drop in the uh, PSNs just to make sure that we get you guys in here ready to go. Combat is joining us, so now we're just waiting on Deadly Rebel. Deadly Rebel. If you're having trouble uh please note and uh you know express the express the concern to the admin or, or just just reach out to us right here mm -hmm. uh, i i can't wait man uh combat i feel like i haven't seen play in, in a very long time now combat if you guys have been you know following the pro season for final combat he was you know technically the the last chance qualifier uh because of the unexpected you know uh I guess that was when COVID-19 as a pandemic began, yeah. right? I mean, it had obviously been happening for a few months at that point. But in the U.S., that weekend was when everybody was like, OK, actually, everything's closed. And so we had to all do it differently than we expected, for sure. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, but, I'm glad he was in there. He was very deserving. Yeah, no, he definitely was. And the only reason he had the exact same amount of points as Samij. 
but they went to a tiebreaker in you know who was who who um what was it who placed higher at evolution and you know that just it was just one tournament in which samij plays higher than combat and because of that that tiebreaker rule favored in, uh, for Samij. But either way, Combat got in there, did a great job. Always such a, such a great competitor. What impressed me most about Combat, he's still a very, very young competitor. He's got mm -hmm. a lot of years ahead of himself if he wants Ooh, to. Ooh, spare change. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Always a treat to see. Yes, yes. Spare change, really good. Uh, By the way, this is a sick Johnny outfit. Can we talk about that? That's pretty cool. <laughs> very dapper, very dapper looking. Uh, uh, Deadly Rebel not committing to that full string, uh, most likely because Johnny Cage could punish that full string uh, with Shadow Kick. Uh, spare Change gonna have a lot of fire on the ground once he does get those projectiles going, uh, but he does. Yeah, up, yeah he, he gives up the mid command grab, which I think is a very strong tool. Sure. Uh, but I, I want to say Deadly Rebel usually plays this variation for the most part. Down four from combat, sees the uh, super plus frames on hit and able to take advantage of the throw, meeting him with some nice lows. Really tough spot here for Deadly Rebel. Yes. Yeah. Stuck, trying to buttons out. Okay, it's the close. beginning of things. And he does spend the full thing. I, I guess because maybe at the end of this Fatal Blow animation, he's not going to be dead, but he's yeah. going to be far enough away to set up the green fire. Let's see. I don't know, man. God. Oh, oh no! Oh my God! What a wasted resource there. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think he thought it was gonna kill, or maybe he thought combat was gonna break. Like, I don't know. He couldn't even broken. He was no, no, no. the whole time. I, I, I don't see it. I don't see why. Well, we have not had the flames out at all this whole time, and a big part of why is Johnny's movement. Yeah, hard yeah. to keep that guy still. He's got these big walking buttons, great move speed. Got a great fireball of his own from further. Yeah, yeah, as long as he's far enough away, you cannot duck those fireballs. Out take Johnny Cage, the arcing fireballs. Standing position, Deadly Rebel being very respectful, getting tossed for his trouble. That's going to be a big whiff punish. Had he had Fatal Blow, maybe he could, you know, put himself in a good spot. There we go. Fire. He just waltzes right through. Oh man, armor right into the movement, right into game number one for Combat Killer. And and that's that's the mentality that that Combat has. And a lot of people do have this mentality when you're like over DOT that doesn't necessarily physically you know disrupt you. Like it's not hurting. It's it's, it's like going through the sun or Kano's fire or or. You know, in this case, uh, Collector's Green Fire, it's not physically stopping you from still playing your game. But what happens is a lot of players get, you know, they have a different mentality when they're in the fire, when they're losing damage for, you know, every frame that you're in there, every five frames that you're in there. And you're just like, I need to get out. I need to get out. Where combat just kind of played it cool. I think he would have made that decision whether he was in the fire or not. And Rebel was expecting him to panic. Rebel was like, I'm 100% sure you're going to panic and die in this fire. And Combat said, no, I'm walking right through it. It's, it's not affecting me. Life bar is just a mental state. It's just a, a scoreboard. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, it's, it's good, man. It's good stuff. Good, good, good strength here by Combat. If life bar is a mental state, he had a great mentality that entire game. <laughs> Underneath, little poke. All right. There it is, but that's the thing, right? There's Johnny on the other side of the screen. Okay, a little bit more damage here. Yeah, so Collector also loses his teleport in this variation. Yeah. So, you know, even though he bullied him from far screen, from wow. screen away, he's not able to really get a big combo from it. Oh, oh that was insane. Why would you do that? <laughs> I mean, that's what Rebel was thinking for sure. There's no way this is coming. That's exactly why I came. Oh, man. Oh, he's holding it. Just oh. hanging out, yeah. There's a there's a crushing blow on that if you hold mm -hmm. it. The After Johnny in that situation, you just walk. No big deal. Wow. Oh, here's a huge chance. Oh man. Okay, he's got to get everything right. If he can get one hit into Fatal Blow, he, he's got him. Oh, is he not close enough for anything after that? Oh wow. I don't I don't know what that was. Didn't try. Go round goes over to combat. 
Great spacing. The confidence right there from Combat to know exactly where he was on screen, just outside. Exactly. Exactly. Pure confidence. Oh. Big. Oh, he really went for it? He went for the forbidden crushing blow? Oh, I feel like Combat can't lose right now. The way this man's playing is incredible. The movement's so good. The footsies are so strong. Take the bull out, trying to get combat, not blocking. Good. Oh, great little duck. Good, good duck. Okay, yep. Finally something. Keeping it unbreakawayable. Yeah, trying to do as much chip damage as possible at the end. Ooh, yeah, I don't... Even that, even that was, was nice. Boy, Johnny just marching through the flames and he lives. He didn't care. He's fine. <laughs> I've done this before. Good follow. State of mind, man. The flames in that time. State of mind failed him. Johnny <laughs> falls into a deep depression. Final round. Still can take the game, though. Yeah, unfortunately, well, it's only a state of mind if uh, you know you don't run out of hell. <laughs> if you run out of hell, you're you're done. Oh, he committed to the whole string. Oh. Okay, cool. I like the dash first. Yeah, threatening with uh, with grab it was cool. Yeah. Very good shimmy here from Deadly Rebel. Oh, nice hit confirm. Bam. He's just waiting. He, he's very familiar. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Hang out. That Johnny's button's so large. Oh, <gasps> that could have been disastrous for combat. Had Deadly Rebel pressed down two instead of uh, I believe that is down four. That could have mm -hmm. been a crushing blow, big damage, big combo. Beginning to mix up the timings on that a lot. Here we go. Will he launch? He does. How's he alive? Oh, yes, yeah, super close. How is he alive? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, it begins. There's no breakaway here. They both jumped? What even on either party's decision? Oh my God. It was like combat was thinking three steps ahead and Deadly Rebel was thinking four steps ahead. I don't, I don't know, and I don't know. They both jumped there after the restand. Uh, but you know, that, that was the way to go. That was the way to go. It was right. <laughs> oh. oh man like i haven't held up in that situation how many times right like yeah. you know i mean we all do it <laughs> i mean I, do it. I i i i love doing it i'll be proud i'll be proud of, of holding up there on hit um but yeah johnny cage is extremely plus after uh you know the, the nut punch most of the time people are like either expecting throw or mm. one Okay, uh, combat, did you see what variation he picked? I did not, I did. I wouldn't be surprised to see the teleport here, but I'm not sure. I, I think the teleport- Let's get him that extra mobility would make sense. Yeah, yeah, I think the teleport from Raiden is one of the best, yeah, he's got spark for it. Uh, yeah. I think it's one of the best mobile tools and, and best like zone controlling tools in this game. Very, very underrated. Even when, you know, Raiden was considered bad, I'm, I, I, I still think it was a great tool. You control all zoning with that because you can always threaten with teleport if you know when someone's gonna zone. Look at that, look at that teleport, it's so yeah. good. Oh my. Mm, gorgeous. <laughs> what awareness. What timing right there by combat. He's got the corner. The funky timing in the back two. Don't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it a curse if you get hit by that twice and crushing blown? It's definitely a curse. It's definitely. Oh! Get Enough of looking for that to be held and now pestering. And at any moment, Deadly Rebel could contend with a guy who's teleporting right next to him, right? So you, you can't be confident at all with trying to throw out a bolo or trying to throw out a fire or whatever you never know when this man's gonna be right next to him and combat looks so confident just walking up to deadly rebel flawless blocking those wake-ups each time like he knows exactly how frustrating it is to be on the other end of that Raiden's mobility is so so good in this yeah uh, that's gonna be a, a really fun mix up there between uh you know the, the, the throw at the end of that string or uh the very punishable uh combo launcher no, he's, he's not going for it. Yeah, I'm not even mad to get hit by the mid. I'm, if somebody does that in a mix-up, like, all right. <laughs> Take your risks. Do what you got to do. Yeah, it, it's definitely risky. Both both of them are risky, but, you know, you got you got the stagger pressure. You don't have to commit to either one of them. All uh, right, now, Deadly Rebel looking good, trying to make this. Okay, game. okay, okay. Hold on now. A lot of DOT. A lot of DOT there. It sure Ooh. is. Keeping them on there. The funky timing. Okay, the overhead comes in, and there it was. Yeah, you could see that the Rebel knew it was time he needed to get in, but Combat already took up that space. So that pick definitely looked strong. Yeah. There might be a switch in variation here. I don't... 
I don't know, man. I mean, Collector has a lot of recovery for like a lot of his moves, which is, you know, out the gate, we saw that combat. It's like, I'm, I'm ready for you to whip something. I'm ready to teleport. I'm ready to get that, that, that punish. So let's see. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what he can do here. Uh, you know, he could go. I, I could see him wanting to use a mid command grab if he does. Yeah, variation one, maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Are you staying? Maybe not. I don't know, man. That was uh, quite decisive there. I mean, he was making a comeback, and it really did come yeah. down to, like, if he got a stray hit into Fatal Blow hit confirm, you know, that could have been his round. But uh, I don't know, man. Combat looked in full control there. I think he's going to have to switch it up a little bit. That's just my opinion. Obviously, I'm not Deadly Rebel. Deadly Rebel is the collector master himself. So let's see. Let's see what he picks. So more people are okay. Yeah, it is going to be the same variation. More people are picking up Raiden now after Aftermath got some buffs, right? But even before, we did see Combat now and then bring out Raiden, even in some big moments in big tournaments. Yeah, so after he's been playing the whole time. Yeah, and I want I want to say that uh, Combat playing Raiden at the Combo Breaker Character Auction Tournament was like the first time that we saw Raiden like come out in competitive play. And uh, I, I remember him getting Raiden at a very very cheap price because nobody wanted to play him. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Good stuff. Good stuff here. Launching up for another combo. Gonna bring him all the way to the corner. No, a little bit of a drop there from combat. Uh, very unlike him. Oh, they're both so worried about the other's options. Down two right on through. Here comes the pressure from Raiden. I like the back throw here. Raiden's gonna be strong either way when he's got that teleport, you know, mid screen or in the corner. Chance! Good neutral jump here from. Deadly Rebel. Um, I, I love the moment that he picked for the breakaway right there. It was a spot where he could at least challenge afterward. Yeah, yeah. Get the round and it's match point. Yeah, I was actually gonna. I was gonna bring that up. I mean, it's it's most people would break away right away, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know sometimes when you're doing the combo, you like you know you confirm if your opponent's breaking away or not. Sometimes they're like, oh, they're not gonna break away. Let me you know put myself in a in a punishable state here to get max damage. Get all up, oh, down three, down three. Little double dipping here from combat. Uh, more double dipping here with part the part one. Part one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever does it. Uh, it's, it's it's very 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 tough to pull off. It's very unsafe overhead. Nice timing. Can you get the round on this? I think so. Close. Yeah, he he got it. Cool. Final round. Fight. But that Raiden could be in your face or really by your butt at any instant. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to overcommit with anything that has too much recovery. Get staggers here from combat. I'm pretty sure that was a hit confirmed there for him. Oh, sure. He didn't think he was going to finish the whole stream. Got him on the roll here. That has worked twice so far. Combat has rolled twice, and he's gotten busted for it twice. Down pouring here. Oh, teleporting Lovely me out of there. Here comes the block comes. I mean, do you ever actually have Raiden in the corner? Like, you never, you never can. This character is all over the place. Oh, Raiden's got Rebel in the corner, I can tell you that much, but maybe not for long. Jumping on out. Still no breakaway available. He's going to be cooking. Cook, cook, cook. Oh, the big damage. There's a lot of Watch damage. Watch for Fade. Oh, he tried for the classic. <gasps> Punish for sure. And down two does seal it, actually. So Rebel staying alive right here. Combat almost with the tricky teleport, teleport. Yeah, love yeah. to see it. Didn't quite come. Rebel was ready. He was. He was indeed ready. He was ready to see that. He was ready to. You know, and combat was like trying to get that fatal blow to hit. It was a little tricky. It was a little nut nutty. But it. Deadly Rebel was ready. He was being very very patient. Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of Raidens like to just kind of throw out that fatal blow there uh, because it, it, it does pretty good damage <laughs> draw. Um, teleport, teleport, fatal blow. Is that what you're looking for? Exactly. That's exactly what they're looking the for. The genius move. Mm -hmm. Big brain really stick. Big Absolutely. Brain stick. Ah, it's going to be Garrus. And I didn't see the variation. Uh, look, Infinite Warden. Yeah, it's Infinite Warden. Infinite Warden. That tiny little text down there. Uh, he's... So this is the... I, I would say combat, it's definitely familiar with, with playing this character. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that, that's crazy. Going from... 
three very different characters, Johnny Cage, Raiden, and now Gears here for his final pick. Uh, of course, he didn't have to switch over here, but I think he's he's found a lot of success in the first games when he switches the matchup. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of just get past, you know, one step oh. ahead of Deadly Rebels adaptation. Get up to there, recognizing that flawless block on the jump in. Sometimes the only way to deal with Gears is jump in, but you know, you gotta watch out for the different timing. He could just go regular jump three. Blocked in time. Oh, lovely movement right there. The big step. Step. Yeah, I wonder. If and he... over it as well. This is really actually looking nice for Rebel, not making it easy for the Sand Traps to connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if he can actually reversal here. I think he might use the crushing blow. I think he whipped it twice. Yeah, there mm -hmm. he is. 30%. Uh, really not that bad. Not that bad for one little Sand Trap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just waiting. He's, he, yeah. he knows it's a gimmick. He knows that like there's no reason to swing or jump because as soon as he moves, that's when he's going to let it go. Oh! There you go. And backing off, of course, combat. I think he, yeah. And think staying he... on top, again, I, I really like how Rebel's moving around that stuff. That said, he's still in trouble here. It's not quite the round, but just a couple of hits of chip and only down four is all he needed. It's match point now for combat. Yeah, I think Deadly Rebel had the, the low sand trap like on his mind because combat just got done whipping two of them right in front of him. And then one, 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 and he just he just couldn't get the idea of sand trap out of his head. Good spacing here from combat, hitting him with that double hammer fist mid. Just a miss there by Rebel. Didn't try that time. Yo, sick. Good, good. Let's go. What an interruption. And now just like that, Rebels got the corner. He did anyway until the scissors of jump kick came through. That little knife stabbing. God, that jump kick so good. Very Rebel, so cautious. So oh. cautious. Both of them trying it out. He tried to fuzzy. It looked like he wasn't quite there on the timing. Yeah, a little too late there. A little too late. And I don't think combat would have been willing to bet at all. Oh my god, that should be it. He's not gonna get breakaway for sure, right? Yeah. No, no way. It's match point now for both. Yeah, but the difference here is that combat does still have access to his fatal blow. So once he gets below 30, you know, it's gonna shut off a lot of options here for Deadly Rebel. But you know, when the opportunity presented itself, you definitely gotta take it, especially if it was a potential last round. It's do or die here for Rebel. Mm -hmm. Do or die here for both players now. Not quite there in time. Some kick. Oh. Yeah, and then he pressed up afterward. It makes me think it was supposed to have been up too, but he didn't get the two for whatever reason. Now it's pressure. Pressure for combat. Incredible OP on both sides of the throws here from Gearus. So Rolling down the hill. Yeah, so easy to get caught in these loops, like over and over again, just throws and throws. Oh my I God. I can't believe he safe jumped the up two, the Gearus up two. How did that even happen? It's like the fastest up two in the game. That was ridiculous. Oh, Don't God. give him the chance for fatal. Oh, he jumped the one. <laughs> oh my God. And now combat's got a chance. It's got to hit him a couple more times. He's definitely got a chance here. But I mean, is, is Deadly Rebel going to just throw fire down on the ground? <gasps> he waited. He specifically oh, waited in combat oh. for that in the sky. Next hit could seal it. He's got him, surely. Dead. Dead. Dead combat. What a call in timing when Deadly Rebel jumped back and he did the air projectile. If combat had done the normal anti air sand trap timing, Rebel would have gotten right over it. But combat called out that moment specifically and knew exactly when Rebel was going to land. What timing by combat moves on in winners. God, oh my god. He and think back to when Rebel did jump back into button from half screen against Gears. I, I, it was it was I don't know it, what to tell you. It was the safe jump. The safe jump when he that up to you. That they, was crazy. And I was like, this is it, man. This is all Rebel. He's on fire. Reeds are out of out of out of control, out of this world. And just like that, combat. Calm down. Man. Uh, let's get combat uh, to stay in here. Combat, if you're watching the stream, make sure you stay in here. And I already left. We're gonna get combat and doom uh, back into the set. So deadly rebel, if you could leave the king of the hill, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, combat and doom.
is going to be our next match here on stream. Uh, it's just going to be awesome. So, Deadly Rebel, please uh, either go AFK or leave the King of the Hill. But man, that I was what a match! I was, Super I was, good by both players. Rebel, I was like Rebel, all Rebel. This is he's got it. He's he's on fire, playing out of his mind, and combat just just took his time. Took his time. One fatal blow, and it, it's really hard to to. Uh, like that fatal blow, like most people want to save it for like the, the game winning scenario or the game winning play, but combat hit it. You know, the opportunity was there and he said, I'm going to use this time to calm down. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to panic. And just like, you know, two moves later. Perfect, man. Absolutely perfect here by combat. And uh, we're ready to go, man. Combat versus doom. Now we saw doom tear, tear through Gur earlier in today's stream 3-0 very decisive incredible footsies incredible like neutral control and now he's going to be going up against another tough companion remember this is uh pool three the most stacked pool in this entire tournament so many good players here and now we get to witness the winners finals of this i can't wait david doom going with sonia didn't see what variation though i think it's got to be ringmaster right no ten hut. Ten, ten hut is only for Friday. I think so. We'll okay. see. Okay. okay. You don't want to mess around when you're playing at someone like. No, he's going with ten hut. No. Yes, that's ten hut. Am I crazy? Yeah. Energy rings charge isn't that? No, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Yeah. I saw the cat turret, and that's the first thing I saw. Definitely not ten hut. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Ringmaster not playing any games here against combat, not gonna leave it up to chance of, you know, being unfamiliar with an obscure uh, variation, but getting that up to here. Big double hammer fist here from combat, trying to, you know, get, get Doom poking, get Doom not blocking, maybe thinking uh, a throw was coming, maybe a low sand trap, something else. And now I wouldn't be surprised to see Combat punish the recovery on an air ring right after what he just did versus Rebel. Great little micro duck. Chance for pressure. No. Oh, goes for the long. We're going risky stuff out the gate, David. First round and let's uh, set a tone here. Let's tell Doom that I'm willing to bet it all here. You better watch out. Oh, well, that's definitely been the style so far by Combat. He's been jumping in. Has not been anti air, has not been follow spot up to it or anything like that. So he's been able to pressure well so far. Yo, yeah. Goodbye, leg. It's okay, she'll have the round to walk it off. She'll be okay yeah. by the start of the next round. Don't worry about it. You know who's not okay? That guy that just got eaten by that bird in the background. Yeah, that's tough. That's a tough one. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I think I get a different animation than the stream does. Um, yeah, I think I think each each person's console is running that separately, as far as I know. Yeah. So weird. So so specific. Oh. Ducks right under there. Down ones. Down oh. from Gears is, is so good. Six frames, pretty good range, and very tough to low profile. Uh, Doom does get that forward throw though, so a little momentum on his side. And right just like that, Gears able to take it back. Now you're right next to him. It's party time. Good dash here from Doom to escape that air attempt here, that jump in attempt. But again, the sand trap, Doom not watching his feet. I don't know if he's just kind of trying to, he's trying to not be paralyzed by the threat of low sand trap, but you know, this is free damage for him. You gotta do something. And, and I guess, dude, that has to be one of the toughest uh, armor breaker moves to hit in this game. Low sand trap, like it's so specific. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Oh. Very strong game one. I love the pressure. You were just talking about it for a little bit. I love the pressure out of combat. Extremely strong, dancing around, jumping around. Never really felt like he got shut down. I mean, neither round was a blow up, right? They were both close-ish. But I never really felt like there was much in the way of his own pressure for Doom. It was really just about combat, moving in, jumping in, taking risks, and they paid out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta take those risks. And like, even when, you know, even when a risk doesn't pay out, you know, you still get the message across to your opponent. Like, I am willing to do that. And then from there, you can kind of, you know, play a whole new set of mind games or, you know, to go from there. Am I crazy to keep doing it? Or, you know, will I refuse to be conditioned by it? 
Uh, so Doom sticking it out here with Sonya. We saw a little bit of set drown from Doom on Friday, uh, a little bit of a different variation, but here, I honestly, I think Ringmaster has to be the best variation here from Sonya, probably yeah. most matchups. It's just, it's too good damage um and just two good uh, incredible projectiles that don't require you know a big uh recovery animation to to get some things going here especially when you got something like sand trap knocking on the door and threatening you at any time anywhere on the screen very tough good duck oh, here. that duck right the little micro duck on the landsies right there genius it's so common to land and get thrown right we've all been in a situation but here's combat ready for it 40%. He just did 40% thanks to that loaded up crushing blow. Doom with the down three to stop any advancements here with the big gauntlet. Getting the forward throw, but combat's okay. Going with the delay wake up, trying to stay back and just holding on a block right up too, but just didn't quite get there. A little too far away, a little miscalculation from combat. And there again, wake up buttons with okay. this. Okay. All right, Cancel. buddy. <laughs> Challenging the cancel here. Is looking like it's all combat. Me. Absolutely, absolutely all combat. Round two, fight. It's hard to see on Doom's side. Like these risks seem like they're all paying out, and combat's able to pressure up close. I what was that? I just rock and slam. <laughs> I mean, it's all working. A very, very unsafe option, but. I feel like he screwed up. Like it was probably supposed to just been like him. He's walking backward, then he does forward too. You know, so something like that. No, I don't know, man. Uh, it, 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 it worked. That's all that matters. Uh, yeah, oh. when even your mistakes are working like that, I yeah. That was flawless. You're that you're gonna be tough to beat if even the weird that stuff's hidden. That was a flawless. That was it a flawless. Oh man, popped yes. their eyes out. Hitting that that very very tough to hit uh, armor breaker there from the breakaway. It's like so specific that I feel like the low sand trap as an armor breaker is like only good against you know someone's fatal blow. But you know that that's such a, a, a strange scenario. But combat was able to get it here, pulled it off no problem. Uh, you know, and I don't know if that's because Doom was so good at breaking away right away. But that is not a good feeling, man. That is a tough tough thing to deal with going into this game number three doom sticking it out here ringmaster hovering over the character and you know he's got at least 50 seconds to think about it he could go mm -hmm. on he could go 10 hut but you know any character he switches to combat is going to have the option uh to switch to raiden or to you know switch to uh, johnny cage who we also saw a great showing here from combat so you know you got to think of the long you got to think of the long run doom what character can do this all for you? Three games straight, or burst 3-0. It's not over till it's over. Combat did walk back, forward two, and it came out as bed of spikes, and it hit. That's all I'm thinking about. If your weird <laughs> mistakes are connecting in that way, and you have the rest of the strength of a player like Combat, yeah, yeah, what's he gonna do? I mean, come on. It's, it's it's crazy, man. It is so, so tough to deal with here. All right, we're back on uh, a level uh, stage with lots and lots of sand here. Uh, that kind of seems to be a, a motif here for Mortal Kombat. Again, we've seen this. Oh, man, armor broken right away. Uh, does that right work? away? Whether you break away or don't break away, or, or was that a specific breakaway call out? Uh, it's so, so specific. Down. There's finally the dash. We've seen him try down one anti air. Sure, it works, but you got to be at the right spot. Here we go. Here we go. I... Kind of tricky there. Amplifying and then can't go there. I think anti air again. You saw the startup of it, but it didn't even matter. It's match point just like that. Doom, Combat is looking unstoppable. He is. He is. Doom, you got to pick it up. I know this is a tough pool. I know this is a tough bracket, but Combat is running all over you here. Getting the Sand Trap down one just to challenge her, make sure she's blocking. Mm. And that beautiful punish here. Charging it up fully here to make sure, uh, I believe that next uh, down two or the Gauntlet Smash is going to do good damage here. Ooh, caught not looking not paying attention falling asleep at the driver real combat gotta tighten it up don't let doom make this comeback because he is absolutely capable of doing anything with this character <gasps> that was scary oh, right yet yeah. again the body splash the five stars frog splash
while I was blocking that second hit. Well, the question is, how does Doom make his way back in? Defense has been really strong by combat the few times he's needed it. Yeah, yeah. And you see, Doom is playing this game of, like, kind of footsies, where should I go? And combat's not even engaged in that. He's just playing a different game, it feels. Look at Doom over there. I respect that. He's trying to play footsies, right? You see the little dance back and forth. Combat is just away. Okay, the finally Doom ready with the whiff punish. Here we go. And the Lanzi's genius takes the two defensive bars. Like, this is scary. 15 seconds left. He does have fatal blows, so Doom's got to watch out. He, yeah. Every every step he makes. Oh, the whiff, the whiff, the whiff. Yeah, yeah. He was... Hold on. Hold on a second. Yeah, he had to give it a go. I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no reason to not try it, uh, especially because Sonya has 50 less health. You know, that possibly could have killed her, uh, whereas any other character would have survived. So, you know, you got to go for it. Hold on a second, Doom, finding the overhead here in the corner. Some good damage down three to just keep combat in check. Make sure he's not squirming too much and make sure that up two doesn't come out. Another that chance. Yeah, he screwed it up last time. This time he's in there. He's already taken off the defensive bars. Next hit can seal it. He tried with a fiddle. It was too close. Seen a completely again. Three times in those last two rounds, Combat tried to jump in at the wrong spot. And a guy who just couldn't get anything wrong, even when it actually was wrong, all of a sudden couldn't get it right. It felt like Doom had the right spacing for the entire last round and a half, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Completely caged in was Combat. Yeah, yeah, he his back up against the wall, no interactable to like jump off of, and uh, you know, combat just kind of got get a little flustered there, and I, I feel like he he took the frustrations from round two over to round three, and you know, Doom was all over it. Like you play frustrated against Doom, he's gonna outspace you, he's gonna stop all your jump ins, uh, but combat. Uh, I'm feeling confident here in Infinite Warden, uh, especially considering that 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 game where he ended it with a flawless brutality. He knows what he's got to do, and maybe he was just misplaying a little bit there at the end. Uh, found himself in a corner, and you know, Doom Doom capitalized off of it. But you know what? A corner is just a very small fraction of an entire stage, especially considering that you know we we have to re-randomize the stage after every match here you know we could get something else we could get a stage with an interactable in the corner uh like this one does have on the right side so adds a little bit of layer of the mind game there another escape route here gets the counter hit on the sand trap there doom trying to do something big body splash here from combat checking him with lots of down ones and here it is nice movement. punish not quite there He didn't, he didn't believe, but it looked like Doom was looking for a neutral duck there, because that yeah. didn't combo. The body splash into the, the, the mid-hitting string did not combo at all. And God, look at this damage, nearly 40%. And Sonya does not have the most amount of health in the game. In fact, least mm -hmm. amount of health in the game. <laughs> all right, and then later. Oh, here's a good big chance. Oh, that's no. an It goes unpunished. What the new? I, these guys are swinging crazy like 37 seconds fatal blows ready it's too sweaty it's too sweaty down one trading and the jump kick yeah i, I wonder what doom was trying there i mean we, we've seen him dashing a lot to deal with gears as jump ins like if he's got enough room or enough time um so i, I don't know if combat just gave him a jump three just to kind of counteract that oh baby that's gonna hit every single game Unless Sony is getting flawless, that's going to hit every single one. <laughs> Looking for Sand Trap, and uh, two... Mm, got it. Right up close. 318 into pressure. Nice. The jump, and that's been so common. I'm actually surprised to see the up three. There have been so many flashes in just that way. Leveling it up here. And now it's his turn to whiff. Oh my god. That was so smart. That was a very, it was a very like level, like 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 down the line gameplay there, a down the line strategy. You know, he could have got a little bit more damage from that first combo, but he wanted to secure the route that said, if I get one more hit, I'm gonna kill her right here, right now, not even giving her a chance to break away, nothing. Smart move here by combat, loading up that gauntlet to the max and fulfilling that crushing blow requirement. Good. Good back-to-back -back games here from Combat. And right now, Combat's going to find himself uh, sitting in the grand finals of 
pool number three. And I know we, we just got some news here uh, in the chat, the way that today's tournament is going to unfold. Uh, we're still going to get a traditional top eight, but the way that every pool is, think of every pool as a mini tournament and where only one player comes out on top. And right now, combat looking to be in really, really good shape here. Combat's in grand finals of that pool. Mm -hmm. The rest of that pool still has, of course, Doom and losers finals of it, but the other players that may get there will be Rebel versus Gur or Abyss or Full Auto on the other side. That's pool number three, was it? Yeah, killer pool. I just killer want, pool. I just That's the top eight, man. On... So good. Just is, yeah, that by itself is a good play. tournament. All, all such good players there, man. Uh, but I don't know what we what what do we actually have? Um, all right. So we're waiting on some matches to you know finish, but we will have you know incredible incredible lineups here. Uh, in pool five, we have uh, Biohazard who just took it three two over Splinter Guy. Biohazard finding himself there in grand finals. And again, if you guys want to follow along at home, it's very 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 easy. Just head on over to Smash.gg. There's going to be a link provided there in the chat. And also, while you guys are here, and if you're not following the stream channel, make sure you follow it. Follow CGL and make sure you're up to date on everything going on in terms of esports. And that's in and out of Mortal Kombat 11. A lot of great content here. Uh, uh, in Pool 6, we have Han Rashid versus Black Lives, uh, which is going on right now in mm. Winter Finals. Uh, that should be a good one. And it's in Pool 2, it's uh, Scar versus DKB. That's 2-1 to one Scar currently in Winter's Finals. It's, uh, in ooh. Pool 1, Samij has already got past Parsa, so Samij is waiting in Grand Finals of that pool. Emperor Aztec is in Grand Finals of his pool. Which one's his pool? That is pool number four. Four, okay. I, lo I love me some so some totemic, but yeah, mm -hmm. he was good. He kept going, uh, and uh, you know, on the, on the on the lower side of that pool, it looks like it's going to be the winner of Mercy Not Given versus Illusions, and they're going to be going up against uh, Emperor Aztec there to see who makes it into the top eight. So very, 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 very uh, tough scenario here for a lot of players because, you know, when you look at your pool, you have to say, am I the best one in here? Because it's only one out, one out getting yeah. the eight, and it's going to be uh, incredible, incredible games all around. In pool seven, Get Wrecked is hanging out in grand finals of it. Losers is uh, MTL Leon. He'll play against either Wound Cowboy or Wind Madness, but Wound Cowboy is up 2-0 in that match. So oh. maybe him. I, I love seeing the fact that that Wound Cowboy is out and competing again. I mean, yeah, he was man. he was such a unique player like back in the day. Very like even watching him play a game like MKX, where like Wound Cowboy is a little bit more reserved. He likes to zone a little bit more, full screen game, all that all that fun stuff. Uh, but even in a game like MKX, where like you have a run mechanic, like a universal run mechanic, he was still able to dominate and and still play you know the type of game he wanted. So I love, love seeing the, uh, the, the, the Wound Cowboy games coming out of nowhere. Uh, what else do we have? Pool 8. How did uh, Mighty Unjust do? Mighty Unjust lost to Bang Ding Ow. And uh, right now... Do you yeah. know who that is? Because it's... Wait, who is it? Oh, it's Verk. Ah, uh, ah. Okay, I retract it. It's a secret player. Nobody knows who it is. <laughs> yeah, mighty unjust. Uh, looking like he's uh, up right now in the losers' finals of that, and the winner of that. Oh, does it look like it? Oh, no, nope, mighty unjust just won. He just won that, and in grand finals, he's going to be going up against the saucy fingers. Saucy fingers. Okay. okay. So yeah, we're mostly done with this. Looks like we have a match left per pool more or less couple left in some so we're working on this we'll get some matches for you i guess we're going to take a few minutes to wrangle them up we're going to have a short break it's going to be shorter than the last time so stick around we're just going to try to get these matches in line for you be back in just a few hey welcome back everybody uh i know we're all waiting to see how all these pools end up. But again, if you're just joining us, you got a lot of great action ahead of you. 
My name is Darth Arma. I'm joined by Ultra David, and we are ready to go. I think I was supposed to point that way. We're ready to go into these matches. Uh, up next, and pretty much ready now, we have Splinter Guy versus Biohazard. And uh, this is going to be some pool, uh, pool, I'm uh, sorry, pool five action. If you guys want to follow the bracket along on smash.gg. And right now, Splinter Guy is hovering over Kano. Yeah, looking back in Splinter Guy's matchups, he played Kano, I think, each time so far. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Oh, no, hold on. If you go back to earlier than that, it looks like it was Nightwolf. So those may be the two characters that he's brought in. Bio, we'll see. Bio's been playing a lot of Bone Picker Baraka lately. He still plays Kano, of course. Got a couple other characters up his sleeve, too. Yeah, and the and other... It's rare that he gets to play against Kano, right? We'll see what he goes with. Yeah, and the other thing that, to keep in mind here is that this is, you know, we're doing a, a slightly different format today. So every pool is going to have one player to come out of it. So think of every pool. All right, now how are we going to tell these guys apart? Out one guy's got the dinosaur bones on his arm. That's what, how we're going to do it here. All right, but... Uh, Bio's got the dinosaur bones. Heads up on that. Okay, okay. And uh, those may be elephant tusks. I don't know. I'm going to call them dinosaur bones the rest of this match. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the dinosaurs went extinct in our world. They just went extinct here in Earth. Well, Wait, hold on. They both have them? Yeah, they oh, both have no. Oh, no. All right, so it's red versus blue. There we go. There we go. At least one of them switched up the color. So, uh, so this is actually a run back. So this is grand finals. These players met each other in the winner's finals of their pool, and it came down to the wire two to three. Wow. The Biohazard off to a great start here. Calling out the fact that he wouldn't do the breakaway, make getting as much damage as possible. That's going to be a late block and a trigger. Late, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, very, very insane. Hold on. Is he going to get his help? No. Gets a regular one. Biohazard. Out of there. Yeah. Out of there. No problem. A lot of neutral. Lovely jump. pickup right there. That was super good. Yeah. Jumping to try to get away probably from grab. But okay. Jumping again. In there. It's not enough quite yet. I love the idea of that button in response right there, right? People will often just do a down one or something that's not really going to lead to much, but you do have more frames than that. He knew it. Splinter guy. He's a lot taking the run. Hold on a second. I spoke too soon. Oh, man. Splinter guy got it in the end. And yeah, let, 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 let's point out the obvious here. Biohazard, a very established player here. And having the uh, the gall to, to, to mirror him is just insane, man. That shows confidence here from Splinter Guy. Uh, right now in the corner, trying to fight his way out. Goes for the regular string, puts himself really negative. So Biohazard taking command here. Going with command grab. Flawless block. Again. No problem. Don't do that to Bio. Don't yeah, do Yeah, we've it. seen it twice, and he's flawless blocked it both times. Uh-huh, yep. Looking for the rest of the string there. Biohazard came to play in this round right there. Classic kill situation. Got the corner even still. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Down one into Kano Ball. If you amplify it, that's four hits. If you don't, that's three. So it's not even a pretty good way to chip someone out. Definitely. Well, back three. No, uh, no crushing blow, though, as it didn't trigger off of a counter hit or punish. Tossing some. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Splinter guy's looking good. Flawless block here from Biohazard. You got to uh, alter the timing there on those jumping. Biohazard loves doing it. That's still tough. That's some crazy stuff here. Mm -hmm, I love it. I love it. Get into the corner. Splinter guy, if he gets one more hit, he's going to take this thing back one. Here comes the grab this time. Chokes him out for the game. Splinter guy has come to play. And even though Biohazard has those sick flawless blocks into launches, even though he had that, there was still so many good decisions out of Splinter Guy. Oh, yeah. He had great, not just taking immediate time counter poke situations, right? Again, blocking the overhead, not just doing something fast, taking up a little bit more time to get more of a payoff out of it, switching up the time that Biohazard had to react to something, to, to counter something of his own. I really like that decision. And in that round, that was really mostly Splinter Guy. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really good decisions. And I think uh, especially that, that round where he won with Fatal Blow, that came down to an incredible call out from Biohazard. He just, you know, he just kind of kept jumping, obviously not because he felt like jumping, uh, but because he was afraid of the command grab and Splinter Guy called it out. 
good hit confirm, uh, which with a fatal blow, that's, you know, a little tougher to use, especially because it's on the slower end of things. And that string was just perfect enough to keep him in the air long enough. All right, Biohazard in a bad spot, getting tripped up by that forward three. Ooh, the tick throw does get hit. So it does come out on hit, and that's not the scenario you want. But Biohazard didn't really capitalize off it too well. Oh, got him. Yep. Yeah, a Kano oh, nice though. <laughs> or a Kano player is going to know how to deal with air Kano ball. You duck right. it to make sure that, you know, when you're when they recover, they're right next to you. Ooh, that was a funky choice. File comes back. Yep. Breakaway? Not. Okay, nice timing on it. And here's a big moment. No, it wasn't in time. File gets to dash in. Snowballing here. He needs a little more. Splinter Guy's dangerous, though. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I guess he, you know, the only thing that could have happened there is Splinter Guy possibly flawless blocking and putting Bio in a punishable state, but Bio knew that was very, very unlikely. Oh, uh, delay wake up there, getting around that forward four. Bio has just got to alter his timing a little bit, and again, back to back, slight delay wake ups for that forward four, and Splinter <laughs> Guy doing a great job of, of dealing with it here. I love the wake up buttons. It was an error afterward, but I love the wake up buttons from Bio. Here's a. Oh. Comes back in. Splinter guy harassing, trying to anyway, but it's Bio's turn. Rolling back, staying away as much as possible. The great thing about that knife toss is that it recovers very, very quickly. So it's a very good projectile. Ooh, down one a little too early. The down one! Anti-air accidentally sick. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a big punish. Yeah, big punish for sure. Yeah. Yep, nice work. That makes sense. Great awareness of the situation. And then Bio's gonna take the game. He had like a 30% life lead there, and he was willing to just bet it all on the fact that like, oh, you know, he's gonna get hit by this. So, so dangerous to do there, especially now with this new armor breaker buff for Kano. You yeah. know, really his back one breaks the armor, leaves him in a standing position, and because they altered the cancel window of that of that normal now that he can combo into fatal blow like we just saw right there so good good stuff there by biohazard good patience and splinter guy you can make this happen but it is a it's going to be a tough order because this is a grand finals biohazard being on the winner side he's going to have to lose two sets to lose to splinter guy and the first person who knocked splinter guy into the loser's bracket was biohazard himself in a in a, a two to three nail biter A lot of back and forth in this match so far. Yeah. You see a little bit of a difference in terms of the way they like to press buttons, which one likes to press a string versus which one likes to harass with down one. Who takes the risks? Who's doing the flawless blocks? Those are all different. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool to see. Yeah, again, Bio is super ready for that stuff. Yeah. And when you now with no bar, it's going to be whatever Bio wants. Yeah, that was a very aggressive flawless block there. Oh, uh, the good whiff punish, but you know, it could have got a little bit more damage out of that if you went with another string. Forward four, good uh, OP afterwards. Right into command grab, some good damage, 22%. Looking for the back three of the biohazard. Slight delay to get around it. Corner switch here, no access to breakaway. So biohazard gonna get as much damage as he possibly can. Mm. Did not expect the meter burn right there. Mm. Bio's got the round. Again, you can still see the difference in play. I love that Bio has the flaws bucked up too. I feel like that's a big advantage on his side. We haven't seen Splinter Guy do it. Oh, clip by the overhead. Nice down two, anti-air. And there, it, that, that's been costing Biohazard so much health. Like this whole set is, is going for that forward four. And if, you know, someone goes for a delay wake up or a slight delay wake up, it's, it's gonna hurt. It's, it's a big, big risk. Okay, so we did see the FP. There was no meter on the offensive side for anything out of it, but good to see. Back one actually moved him away. That was sick. Yeah, and that, that, that's also sick because it's it's, Kano's got one of the best up twos in the game. Oh, hold on. Yo! Wait a minute. Wait, did yeah. he not hold the button? Yeah, I don't know if he didn't hold the button or if you have to amplify it for that one. Flawless block up two and Biohazard steals it, or I think he stole it. This is very, very close. He actually might still be alive now that I'm looking at it. Oh, no, he's dead. Nope, he's not. <laughs> he's not. Oh, That's a two to one, friend. He stole that. Biohazard literally on a pixel less than one percent of his health there that was insane that was absolutely insane 
A lot of strength on Bile's side. You can see that. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. A Some lot big reads in there. Big, big reads. Uh, a lot of great flawless blocking. But I do like yeah. what Splinter Guy did there uh, as an adaptation. So Biohazard was doing like the classic, you know, aggressive flawless block where, you know, when you're done doing your string or you're at like, you know, negative but not punishable, you know, you go, you, you try to predict your, your opponent, your opponent's fastest button, whether that's a stand normal that leads into a combo or a down one to just check. Ooh, you predict it so you can do a flawless block of two and Splinter Guy, instead of giving him his, you know, the usual stand two or down one, he goes with back one because it, 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 it puts him at a safe distance away from the flawless block of two. But David, you just said, ooh, to that dirt bag ooh, pick. Ooh, ooh, the dirt bag pick. Yep, that's what he's going to be presenting Biohazard here. What do you think about third bag now, man? You've been playing that character. Uh, I, I still think Ripper is the better variation just because of the access to damage and the overall mix up. Uh, Dirtbag also is very tough to keep certain characters in the corner. And, you know, he, although he does have a lot of great things in the corner with Molotov and Acid, uh, it, it's really easy for Kano oh. and, and, and just Kano ball out of there. Oh boy, first time we saw that crushing blow there, back three, right into the gut. A little back throw, failed escape, unusual there because I feel like the back throw was the obvious throw. Mm -hmm. So it's like like a throw mix mix. He might have just been pressing a button also, you never know. It's match point for Biohazard. <laughs> Maybe he was just mashing down two. Round two, fight. All right, checking the interactables, making sure he gets that hit. Now, the Vegemite will give him access to get around the knife, but it's a very tough projectile to react to with that. Yeah, this pick is not looking like it's paying off very well. He's caught in the corner. Okay. Ah, right over instantly. Oh, baby. Here we go. Give it to me. Down to crushing blow. A lot of guaranteed damage there for him. Even if Biohazard broke away, would have been able to do lots of damage here. And speaking of damage, okay. I completely forgot he had that loaded up from the unusual uh, failed tech from getting tossed into the corner. Well, it seemed like Bio was about to run away with this thing. And yet here's Splinter Guy getting it going again. Yes, right back through. Might have been calling out a knife. None came, but he still got the hit. With Punish, it was not quite there. Super close. Still toasted. Yeah. Okay, very nice. That's somebody who plays Kano. Oh, he the acid went away. The acid went away. Wasn't there in time. That's a bummer. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, no meter for anything as well. He got the flawless block, but no launch possible. And now Biohazard's two mix-ups away from taking the set. Oh, big jump yeah. and kick away. Power enough. Got him! Can he get through the flames? He's got to wait. And he's got to wait. Oh. Yeah, okay. Let's go Splinter Guy. I thought it was over when we had Bio with the life lead in the left corner. Already had taken a round. I thought that was all she wrote. And yet Splinter Guy took that round. He took the next round. He's back to play. We're going down to a final game. Nice, nice, nice. And it really, that, that last decision there, or that last exchange was thanks to the Vegemite. Uh... Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna call it a character power. Definitely not a character power, but it's a buff. Uh, it's a trait, yeah. <laughs> specific to this variation. Now that's gonna give him a hit of armor uh, that activates with Kano Ball, and you know because of that, there was no way that trade was gonna happen, or even, or even he was gonna lose uh, to Biohazard going with a Kano Ball. But let's see, Biohazard stick with Ripper, most likely. Yeah, he's sticking yeah. with Cooper. So the other thing that you lose here with um, when you pick dirt bag is you lose the follow up to forward four three. Instead, you only get a forward four, which isn't that great on Oki, and definitely does not do anywhere near as much damage. Starting out well here's Bio, deep jump and kick, but the respect from Splinter guy here. No flawless block, as he knew he really can do much about it. Gets the acid on him. Yeah, on the got, oh, yeah, had to get out of there. Nice reaction right there by Bio. Waiting for the Amplify, none came. Still flames over on the other side, by the way. Oh, it, it lasts for a while. It lasts for a <laughs> while. Unlike the acid, the acid is the one that does not last a long time at all. So got him. Fire. Oh, yeah. You got some time. Fortunate down one into acid. Did not combo there in that airborne exchange. 
Ooh. I need to get the whiff punish. No. The break. Yeah, here we go. Bio again is going to be at match point. He's been here before. Wasn't able to seal it in the last game. Here under the trees, maybe. Oh! That was close. Oh! Yo, what a read! God. That was insane. Not going to have any bar to break away from this. Biohazard is going to do 42%. Does get the punish of the down one, but down one does not stop yeah. with anything. Oh, <laughs> these are all working out right now for Bio. Big trouble here for Splinter Guy. One more mix up is going to do it. His grab, yes. Okay. Even after Bio's done ducking it down to a couple of times. Underneath the grab, and that's going to be Biohazard. Look, awesome job by Splinter Guy taking Biohazard 3 to 2. 3 to 2? Both times? in yeah. the Kano here. Super legit. But Bio comes out on top yet again. He's going to be move, moving into top eight. Now, we did briefly address this, but just to reiterate, the way that we've run this is that each pool is its own tournament. And so you needed to have one through grand finals effectively to make it into top eight, meaning that top eight is going to be everybody in winners, right? That's how we're going to be doing it here. Exactly. So, so Biohazard will be the first one we know of to make it in. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, think of the top eight as a whole new tournament that's only yeah. with two players. Uh, so that means more matches for you guys later on. And also a little bit more of a of a of a redemption for someone who you know could have possibly uh, lost or early in the tournament, got knocked out of the winner's bracket into the lower bracket. But you get to go into the top eight at, at, at an even playing field even ground with all the other competitors so biohazard congratulations man that was incredible incredible kano play uh and i believe next up we have the mighty unjust uh who's going to be coming over from which pool was that david do you remember mm, nope but i'm looking for it now no tell me when you find it uh the mighty unjust i believe this is also gonna be an, you said eight eight pool eight. number eight yes indeed it is indeed it is Pool eight is going to be our, uh, this is going to be the grand finals. Saucy Fingers versus the Mighty Unjust here. Uh, now, the Mighty Unjust, again, someone who, 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 you know, dropped down to the lower bracket, not super early, but, you know, he, he definitely a lot earlier than he anticipated. Uh, but was able to win uh, in the, the in the run back, so to speak. Uh, Mighty Unjust getting through Trap Hustle twice. Uh, and then going through Alcatraz, Foxhound, and our mystery player here. Now finding himself here in the winner's final. I'm sorry, in the grand finals, where he can get into the top eight. All it takes is one set. But Or I guess in this case, since it's a grand finals, it's going to take two set victories for the Mighty Unjust to you know get back into this top eight, get back into the running. So let's see, let's so see. It's been Joker from Saucy Fingers, looks like. Good character, solid character. No doubt about that. One one final combat, you know? The mighty unjust. I think solid is a great way to put it. Some of the other characters who I think are top tier are really good at like one thing uh -huh. or, or whatever, a few things. I feel like that character Joker is good at every single thing. <laughs> like there's no he, extremely solid character is just a great way to put it. It's good buttons, man. Good buttons all around from that character. Uh, just, you just have all those like extended, you know, hit boxes. Uh, very tough to get around. But man, man, oh man, I can't wait to see this uh, grand final set. Remember, Mighty Unjust on the lower side uh, because he lost in round three. Right. Uh, did we get an invite out to Saucy Fingers? I see the mic. All right, Saucy Fingers, if you can please check your inbox or, or, or help us troubleshoot your problem into getting into this king of the hill so we can get started uh we'd love to help because we really really want to see this man i can't wait uh I, I i you know alluded to this a little earlier today on today's stream mighty unjust is one of those players that can literally play any character in this game uh so the sky's the limit when it comes to you know what character he's picking i've seen him pick avalanche sub-zero against terminator just because it can keep that character out really well uh, I've seen him go random select, hidden, hidden random select in tournament just for the fun of it. Like this is is a really, really solid, well-rounded player. But knowing that he's got to win two sets in this grand finals, he might kick it up a notch. He might kick it up a notch and and, and just maybe he'll go for the Joker pick, maybe Cetrion. I don't know. I don't know who Mighty Unjust is going to pick. 
literally anyone is possible here. Okay, both players are now in. Starting the match. We'll find out very shortly. And which Joker are we going to see is a question as well. It's very rare that I see anything outside of Variation 2. Come on. Yeah, all right. Fine. Very rare. <laughs> And unjust going with noob. Which one here? What do we where, got? Where does, he keep that cane? where does he keep that cane? The cane? I don't think you want to know. <laughs> do you want to know the answer to that? I mean, you can't bend your leg if that's if it's where I think it is. Like you just, how do you walk Wait, around? Like he what? seems to be doing fine. <laughs> He's a very, he's got great walk speed. Very, very good. Yeah, no doubt about that, yeah. Uh, that, that was interesting because he, he it was almost like he masked the, the overhead with the explosion of the Jack in the Box. Ooh, lovely timing on the delay got right on through the string. Yeah, wake up buttons. Everybody's favorite. Approach. Throws the slow sonic boom to get in. Here we go. Into the corner. Mm. <laughs> the, the guy's still. Yeah. That always cracks me up, dude, when you're doing that string. <laughs> he's gotta have some he's gotta have a crazy nice wheelchair. <laughs> this is the fastest ca dash cancel I've ever seen. It honestly didn't look like he moved. No, that was that was immediate. Like was he was he buffering that? Like what was that? That was insane. I look back on the replay on the stream and it still looks like he didn't even move. That was <laughs> Big jump in. Yeah, a re really good way to get around those those oh, lows. No. Oh, mighty and just finding himself in a bad spot, getting just hit in the nads over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're taking a lot of punishment out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah good job on the throw mix here from mighty and just. Didn't want to go the obvious route with the back throw. Beautiful anti air. Oh, nice. Yeah, hard to stop Joker from coming in behind that jack in the box, but if you're ready for the anti air, and he was, you're there. That yeah, and that was not the right spot for that. Great punish here from the Mighty Unjust. Amplifying it, knowing he's going to get hit either way, but he wanted to make sure Joker really couldn't get any momentum from it. Yeah. Now, I know the Mighty Unjust is very familiar with this character as well, so, you know, gimmicks are definitely not going to be enough to stop, you know, a Mighty in this scenario. So you got to dig in deep here, Saucy Fingers. You got to dig in deep. Amplifies. Okay, gets out of the corner. Great job. And just turn back. I can't. All, I feel like all the meter has been spent on that. Mm -hmm. on the jack in the box for the approach. Yep, safe. Yeah, it really depends if like Joker gets pushed back from the animation or not. Like very specific things. And I think that was a flawless block attempt here. Does he have it loaded up? No, didn't have the bar to load it up. I think he's still he's one or two. it all on this, honestly. Yeah. Oh my god. The harassment. Okay, just like that. And he does spend it now. Okay, all right. Nothing? What happened? No it, amplify? It no amplify, but I think also it was no um it was no punish, no counter. And I, I don't know if if right, Mighty, she didn't say punish either, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Mighty might have been looking for a neutral duck. Uh, but Joker's forward one is, is such a good mid. It's not the fastest mid in the world, but the hitbox that it covers is, is so good. Man, oh man. Nice work. So Saucy is the one coming from winner's side, right? Yes. Yes. So yes. if he wins three games, then he moves into top eight. Again, Mighty and Just will have to win two, three out of five sets. Exactly. Just like it's the normal grand finals of a normal tournament. Yeah, yeah. Again, guys, think of all these pools as individual tournaments. One person that wins the tournament will qualify for tonight's top eight. And uh, again, I do see some of you guys asking in the chat. Some, some of you might be wondering if you're just viewing. Yes, today is going to be top eight later on. Uh, so make sure you make sure you're following this channel first and foremost. Make sure you're following the channel so you guys get notified when we go live. Oh, what a what a conversion here! I don't. What was that stand three, David? Do you think that was an input error? Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there. Yeah, I mean, at that range, why why do that button? Possibly an input error for low slide. 
the late wake up button. Yeah, that's happened a couple of times here. Yeah. Looking for brick, none came. To the rescue! Can he punish? Not quite in time. Ah, he goes for the overhead. Insane. Absolutely insane. Saucy fingers backing off and waiting for it and throw into the corner. Genius. What a punish right there. You had anything you wanted to do and he wanted the corner. Smart, smart stuff. I mean, yeah, you can you can have your cake and eat it too. Like you can get the win and and, and just because this is this is like almost feels like lockdown here. When Joker has you up against the wall, straight jack in the box, you know, amplifying it, not amplifying it. it it's such a mix up. Oh, try to get the down two for any kind of damage here. Joker does have one of the weaker up twos when it comes to flawless blocking, but hey, damage is damage. No amplify. Oh. Really overextended butt neutral duck into a down two. Oh, great blocking. Here he comes. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. That's going to be a good conversion here. Coming back in. And I, oof, he definitely could have gotten a punish for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, the low, a little tricky no. there. He was just trying to check. The interactable was blocked, and now the jack in the box is coming to party. And tires ready. Down force. Get the, the hit and immediately confirmed. Saucy fingers. I'm so impressed by the movement, by the corner pressure. Everything's looking good. The hit confirms have been there. This is tough. This is a tough one to beat. So Mighty Unjust at this point has to not only win the next three games, but then three more games. I don't know, you have mentioned how many characters Unjust plays. What do you think is going to happen here? Um, I, I feel like he's going to try to find maybe a character that Saucy Fingers is not as familiar with. I don't think Noob is a very common character, but I, I feel like for a while he was like, you know, the flavor of the week. And, you know, Saucy Fingers is doing a good job of jumping over these slides and you know not not going crazy i think i think mighty needs to to dig in deep and find a character that's gonna you know it's got a few more tricks up its sleeves Sub what do we got the joker sub zero hmm. sub zero i didn't see what variation this was yeah, me neither. sub zero he uses avalanche because of the, the arctic trap um you know I guess, yeah maybe that might be useful in a matchup where joker's been following up nope, nope never mind it's variation it's a uh... Uh, variation one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh. So I guess I guess he could get through. I actually, can you bust through the jack in the box? I don't know if it counts as a projectile. To be perfectly honest, I don't either. I, I want to say it does. I want to say deep, the interaction will be deep. Never. No, you're right. Never mind, man. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, he ends up getting it anyway, right? But still. Yeah, because you're frozen for so long. You're frozen for so long. But right now, mighty. Yeah, the Sub Zero is looking incredible here. Two, uh, two hits, half the health gone, half the job done in this round. You can do it. You can absolutely do it. They're shutting off a lot of things right now. Saucy's just kind of taking his time. Good flawless block there to minimize the uh, the block stun here. Forward four, and I think Mighty and Just definitely, mm. definitely, definitely gonna take this crushing blow. And they said it would never happen, people. They said it would. Sub <laughs> Zero is never gonna hit two forward fours in a row. How is that possible? It doesn't even hit as an overhead. Fight. Well, we just saw it. Well, <laughs> we saw it. great block. And that was a very last split second block by Saucy Fingers. And I think that's why I just thought that it would be the right call. Move forward, super good. I like that to actually move forward from behind that. Exactly, exactly. Get away from it. Don't even have to deal with it. Right. You know, and then what's the worst? Even if he somehow blocks it, you're still plus. You're so plus after forward four. <laughs> Delay wake up here from Mighty and Just. A little late on the on the one two. And he didn't get the hit confirm either. Is this two of these now, I think? I believe this is the second one, yeah. Pressuring a little bit. Yeah. Very light stuff. Okay, okay. yes. Overhead begins. Give him the mix. Give him the mix. Okay, one more. Forward two into Fatal Blow. Oh! Chip. Oh, yeah, I mean, even if that had been blocked, right? At that point, you're gonna get chipped again. Yeah, he, he was trying to flawless block it there. Maybe flawless block like up three if Joker got close enough. Oh, underneath, very smart. 
Oh, that's gonna be a big bet. He has his own overhead low mix-ups. It looks like Mighty and Jess is opting to not force the breakaway. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like sometimes it's great to, to force the breakaway because you know the next hit is going to be so damaging to them. But Mighty and Jess just backing off. He wants to be mid-screen. He doesn't want to be in the corner. Whether that's him in the corner or his opponent in the corner, it's a very, very specific uh, decision here. I tried to press the button a little bit too fast. It's coming for him. Two bars spent to try to get in. <laughs> so many flawless blocks here from Mighty. <laughs> We're gonna see the Buffalo special, the down four uh, shoulder. Oh, didn't go for the overhead. Come on, Mighty, give me down four shoulder. Give me down four shoulder. Do it, it'll work. Uh, <laughs> one bar spent. He got! And the grab, okay. Yeah, he knew he wasn't in time to do anything else. Yeah. Dashing forward and no commitment. It was indeed gonna be down four shoulder, but that would have been fine in that instance anyway. Yeah, yeah. Whether he blocked or not, or whether he rolled, like it was gonna chip him out. Uh, unless it was a very, very rare instance where he would somehow flawless block low the down four on wake up. Yeah, that's possible. Uh, yeah, it, it is possible. But unjust is uh, doing great here with sub zero. So I think he found, you know, a, a character that's finding him success. Now the question is saucy fingers, although he does have a he has a joker icon here. Does he have a different character? Does he have, you know, uh, some other character that he can, you know, try to counter here with sub zero? And it doesn't look like he does. He's going to stick it out here with joker. Uh, but that was that was all mighty. It was it was a longer game, more controlled pace, but mighty is feeling good here. The movement was a huge part of it, and the fact that he has the freeze from far away to make it so that Joker can't just throw the Jack in the Box and walk behind it or dash behind it. Instead, it's really got to be paying attention to what Sub Zero does. I think that might have been the intention, maybe with clones or something with Noob. I don't know, but it just didn't work out. And now Sub is doing the trick. Yeah, yeah, Sub's definitely doing the trick here. Hitting a counter. I'm not sure if that was a wake up button scenario from Saucy. Too far. Yeah. Now you can set it up. Ooh, he got there in time. Oh. There's so much stuff. So much stuff. Wake up buttons. Wake up buttons. Everybody's favorite option. Go to on wake up. What? Back to here. Right to it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the movement on Joker's side. I tell you, you can never be safe against this character. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Definitely can't. All right, so now Joker's in, in a dangerous territory here because he uh, yeah. has Fatal Blow. One more mix and he can do it. Oh, yeah. One more freeze, one more anything from either of these characters. Bringing in the funky timings. Stealing a bunch of frames. And now neither one taking the big bets, okay? Okay, ah, four one, but okay. In any case, it's match point now for Saucy Fingers on the left side of the screen. Yeah, I, I think he, he really committed to throw coming out there. Oh, mighty unjusted. Oh, went for the mid. He thought he was gonna throw him like last time. So that was a neutral duck here from Joker. This time, mighty unjust hitting him with the back three two, and confirming some good damage. Ooh, that that was that was really good at him not to commit to the rest of the train because that could have been a big whiff punish there on the wake up. Forward to overhead, watch your dome over the other side. Mighty Unjust flawlessly hitting this execution, no problem. A lot of shots here, right to the head. Big jump yeah, in. Big Joker. Shots. Interesting usage. Heat the low. Joker was willing to press down one right after, even though he was really negative. You know, it's not a bad idea to check once in a while. Oh, the startup. Here it is. Again. He's not playing. Really the whip punish. Beautiful stuff he's going to bring in the crush. Down two, it's not quite enough. Super close though, chip, and that's gonna do it. Saucy Fingers moves into the top eight with this Joker pick. I like the idea of going to the sub. It definitely seemed better than the new, but ultimately that Joker, the movement, the options, the whiff punish ability of that character, just extremely strong and Saucy Fingers used it extremely well. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was tough, man. It was a tough thing to deal with, and you know, Saucy played solid. And, and again, think back to 
you know that that incredible dash cancel that like we couldn't even see uh, that just shows you how much you know he knows about this game and how well he can execute that jesus oh man jesus that was that was close super yeah. nice <laughs> that was nicely played right there i love to see that that's I mean, the character is extremely good, obviously, Joker, but I really like watching him. I think he's a lot of fun to see, really controlling the stage, very uh, fundamentally sound sort of character. And I enjoy watching that kind of character because it's just, it's a great display of the player's skills, you know? It, wow. Very strong, but still you can really see that it's a strength of the player. And uh, I, I love that. I thought that was really fun. No, no, and it's it's, it's very, very... I mean, Saucy, man. Saucy came out of nowhere and, and, and did this to the Mighty Unjust. And, you know, obviously we could add a different set if Mighty went with a different character. But, you know, Saucy's in there in the top eight, which, again, guys, is going to be uh, later on today. And uh, we've got a lot of things going on here with uh, Console Combat Online. So, again, if you guys aren't following this Twitch channel, make sure you are so you're notified every single time we're going in here. And it looks like we have a... Uh, so we're going to do a preview. Uh, we're going to preview this lineup, and we're going to check out this graphic. Again, a lot of information here. If you guys are Fantasy Strike players, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath, which is the tournament going on right here. So I guess we miss Fantasy Strike. Uh, Killer Instinct heads out here. We're going to have a $1,000 prize pool. Yeah. yeah. Let's play KI. It's a good game, you, everybody. It is. It is. Great, great net code, too. Uh, yeah. And just for you, for some of you uh, who, who, who just want to, you know, be superheroes, you don't want to sever any heads, but, you know, it, it's it's fine. It's fun. Uh, August 15 and 16, we're going to have a $1,000 prize pool here for North America. And then Smash Brothers Ultimate, we're going to have a $1,000 prize pool. It looks like it's going to be open. Or we're going to have one for NA and one for uh, EU. So if you guys are fans, of any of these games, whether it's you as a viewer uh, or you as a spectator, make sure you're following this Twitch. Or if you guys are competitors, make sure you head on over to register. All you guys got to do is go to consolegamingleaguecom slash console dash combat. And remember, this isn't just MK, so combat is spelled with a C. Uh, make sure you guys register there for those tournaments. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see the show. I can't wait to see what else uh, console combat online has to offer. So I just want to also give a shout out to CGL for running this, not just in NA this weekend, but also EU and South America and Africa, which is a continent that is extremely uh, underrated and undershown in sort of world FGC, not just in NRS games, but in general, it's something that we almost never get to see. And yet there's like a billion people there. It's a huge continent. So I think that's super, super cool that we get to see that as well. Uh, shout out to everybody who ran that, everybody who played in that. A uh, lot of fun. I definitely recommend checking it out if you didn't. Um, we are going to take a break right now, I guess. Uh, yeah. We are going to come back at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time, which is about half an hour. So wait for that. We're going to get all the top eight ready for you. We'll see who makes it in there. We now know two. We know that Saucy Fingers and Biohazard will be in there. Pay attention to the brackets on Smash GG. And you will know as well who's going to be in that top eight. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be an incredible top eight. Uh, Aquaman and Caboose are going to be uh, casting that. So it's just going to be nonstop adrenaline action there. And uh, I guess this is going to be it for me and David. Uh, I want to say thank you, David. It's been fun. Uh, very rare that we get to commentate together twice in the same weekend. But I had a blast. <laughs> uh, Definitely, man. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And I just want to uh, give a shout out and let everyone know uh, on my stream, we're actually doing Injustice 1 exhibitions. We did one last Thursday and the Thursday before. We had great players like Sounds Like Paws, Decay, Forever King, Blood Cry, and way, way more. We're trying to do it every week. So if you guys want to go even further back in time into Injustice 1, check out the stream on Thursday. I know David has a lot of fond memories of uh, Injustice 1 Bane. With, yeah, uh, sure. what, with, one, one of the biggest jerks of a character I've ever used. No slave was no, armor whenever he wanted it. It was it was fun. Definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, so just to be clear, everybody in the chat, if you are one of the players, do play your matches, and we'll see you in top eight. So yeah. these are the last matches that we're going to have before the actual top eight. So if you're still in there, you do need to play your matches, and then we'll see. All right. Again, the top eight is expected to start in about half an hour. So go get some lunch or whatever it is. Come back. We'll have a lot more matches. 
I won't be here. I'll be watching, but I won't be commentating. Enjoy Mr. Aquaman and Caboose. Have a good day, everybody.